Yo, what's going on, everyone? It's Brian and Jim here with Drink a Beer and Play a Game, and welcome to another episode of the Power Hour Podcast. Yes, hello, everybody. Welcome to episode 201. Thank you for joining us tonight. We are recording this on the 13th, so by the time this is coming out, it'll be right around the time for St. Patrick's Day. I've got my green DBPG shirt on, got to whore the brand, and there's a certain logo on here that was drawn by a certain guy. He happens to be our guest tonight. He is the one and only Broken Optics himself. He is Rob. Rob, how you doing, man? Hello, hello, hello. Uh, it's finally good to actually be here. What, what's it been, like three years? <laughs> yeah, only a couple years in the making. <laughs> just, a, just a couple years. <laughs> oh, calling you out now. <laughs> oh, we're, we're, we're go-getters. We're really on yeah. top of things. Hey, you know, better late than never. Wait, yeah, Jim, right? why, don't you, uh, why don't you do fans a favor, stand up and, and show off that beautiful artwork? Right here? This right yep. here? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Try to keep my fat gut too much out of it, but... All right, now, Jim, lift the shirt and give the people what they want. No, they have to pay for that. <laughs> How you yeah, doing, yeah, that, Rob? That, that, that's the special Patreon tier. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's when the, uh, that's when the, pasty, the DVPG pasties go on there. <laughs> now, an, extra, an extra 10 bucks, you, get, you got a wiggle. <laughs> now, anyone who is on our Twitter this. and who knows Optic or our Instagram... Um, I'm sure you've seen his great work, but Rob, where can people find you and where do you want them to subscribe or follow you at? Uh, I really just right now, uh, I'm just promoting the uh, the Twitter and the uh, the Instagram. So it's Broken Optics Art on Instagram and Broken Optics on Twitter. Uh, you can find me there. I'm open for commissions from anywhere, whatever you want. I, I, will, I will do so. I, I've worked with a lot of people recently <laughs> like uh, like chris bay and uh doing like some corporate gigs and stuff now so it's kind of like oh things are actually happening it's great nice nice so i'm like yeah if, if you need anything come hit me there yeah you've been doing a lot for chris bay lately doing like uh what album cover artwork and t-shirts and all kinds of stuff like that yeah, it was really strange because I, like I'm sitting there. It's like December. I, I hadn't had work in a little while, and things were kind of getting real tight. And I'm like, "Wow, I think I'm kind of screwed." Then on New Year's Eve, I get a message from Chris Bay, and I was really confused by it, and I annoyed the <laughs> shit out of him. <laughs> and then I realized, oh wait, this is the guy. I thought it was someone kind of messing with me or something like yeah, that. Yeah, right. Uh, well, and it's then, a check mark now. You don't know who's who. <laughs> oh, I, I I got a little bit of a story with that one. I found out a, a bug with Twitter. But um, the the uh, the thing is um, like you know he contacted me on New Year's Eve, and I'm like, kind of like at my wits end, and it was just like, oh, you, like you want to do some uh, work for uh, a, a music thing he was doing, and it was like, oh, when well, you draw a fairly odd parents thing, and I'm like, that's completely out of my wheelhouse, but all right, I'll do it. <laughs> And That's then awesome. I ended up doing a couple more things for him, and then uh, and then the the corporate gig came around. I, I don't know how much I could talk about with that one, but it was uh, a thing with the the Mac Corporation. Oh, they were doing out. some they're doing some um, some like internal thing that involves wrestling stuff, and it's it was just like oh uh, it, like I got suggested, and it was like oh cool like finally something like worked out, but it was like kind of shell shocked about it it's like oh god <laughs> <laughs> but yeah it's like it's it's stuff like that I'm, uh, right now i'm working with jt energy on on his stuff uh he's a he's a guy who was uh, recently seen on uh on raw like two months ago getting beat up by bray wyatt <laughs> nice <laughs> <laughs> well if the rumors are true now he's one of the last guys to get beat up by bray wyatt yeah, yeah. Uh, i mean Supposedly it's an injury, but they won't say. It's like, uh, you know what? I, I don't know. Whatever happens, happens. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So yeah, but oh, I will. I will do throw out the Twitter bug thing. I subscribed for Twitter Blue for a month, mm -hmm. right? And it turns out that if you unsubscribe from it, that check mark will not go away. It becomes like herpes. So Ooh. what you do is you change you, you when you change your name if you change like your name your display name or whatever any of that stuff it'll take away the check mark and then it'll re-verify you repeatedly. Ooh, really? I'm not yeah, I haven't been paying for like for two months 
Still, it, it just keeps verifying me. Still I just, verified. Ooh. Oh, I'm canceling the fuck out of that then. Jesus. <laughs> yeah, I, like, I, like I just got the check mark back today again, and I'm like, this needs to stop. This is like a just a weird STD I have with Twitter now. <laughs> <laughs> well, now it's a thing that, yeah, people, regardless if you got it, there's no way to verify if people actually got it right, so they're just going to assume the negative. It's almost like... Now more cliche to have the check mark, and you almost don't want to have it because you don't want to be called someone who p- bought it, like me and Jim. <laughs> well, they well, differentiate it, but yeah. yeah, it still says you pay for uh, for Twitter Blue though uh, when 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 you look at it. But it's like I haven't paid since that one month, and I only did it that one month because people were trying to run PayPal scams where they were cloning my account oh. and sending people PayPal uh, links and shit. So I was like, mm mm, yeah, that's, I, I, that's I, not fun. I, yeah, so I was like, I- I'll pay for the check mark, you know, whatever, because I'm like, if people are running scams. They're looking to get money. They're not looking to spend money. <laughs> yeah. So I'll spend, I'll spend the the, the the ten bucks or whatever, uh, you know, to to do that and you know, like, I just do it for like a month because it was during Christmas. So it was like, oh, I don't want people getting scammed under my name. Yeah. yeah. Right. No, yeah, that sucks that that even happens to begin with. But we will have for sure all your links below. And as I said, Optic obviously did our logo, did both versions of them. But I know the thing you're most proud of is the picture I'm going to put up, which is the simple gem. (laughs) 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 I remember talking with Jim about that idea, and I was like, I'm going to send this to Optic, and I want to see his reaction. I was like, (laughs) I was like, either hope like that's really stupid or just laugh at it. And luckily, you just laughed at it. (laughs) Oh, I mean, people have asked me to do all kinds of uh, uh, strange things, and I was just like, I'm like, is he okay with this? Because like, because I, I don't need him pissed off. At me. <laughs> I don't have dignity. It's fine. <laughs> but actually, anytime someone winds up seeing it, or like if we post in the Discord for new people, they're always impressed by like the level of detail. They're like, the more I look at, it, the more things I notice. Yeah. Like, why is the controller upside down? <laughs> <laughs> and then I sit there going, all right, which was a Brian suggestion, and which was just Rob being little clever boy. <laughs> Jim, Jim, what you will love is. Um, do you, Jim, do you even remember which picture? Because that face you're making is from a reference picture. Do you remember which it, it was? It, yeah, it's from a very specific picture that yes. I was sent. Yeah. I, I can't remember which one. I've made so many <laughs> stupid pictures in my time. It was the one where you're like holding the plate of pizza and going, Nyee. that face <laughs> you're making. <laughs> yeah. But I, I was like, that was probably the hardest thing to send him. I was like, oh, what's the best face for a simple Jim face? And I was going to do the... You know the usual derp face, but I was like, "That's almost too easy." No, that worked out better. <laughs> you made the right pick. You can't <laughs> now, now, that Rob, looks like a real Linus Tech Tips hard R right there. <laughs> Damn it, Jim. Top now, now, Rob, it's funny because Jim and I talk all the time, and one of the things that we've noticed in beer is how a lot of cans and label art has become very like uber simple. I'll call it. And it's like as minimalism as possible, but you still have some companies out there that like really like get into the artist. And one of the people who were previously on our podcast was talking about her process for hiring artists. And like, you know, they basically commission folks to just make, you know, beer art label. That would be something I think like that would be probably really cool to see that on a product or like, is that something that you'd be too outside your wheelhouse or something that'd be right up your alley? I would be absolutely down to do it. I mean, I've done all kinds of things. I mean, like going from, I mean, like I was drawing monster trucks for people and, and, and also like stuff that like you would never really see me do. It's like, usually it's like, oh, I'm drawing some kind of dumb monster or like some horror thing or some wrestling thing or something like that. But it's like, I'm kind of all over the place. Like I'll do the beer. Like if, if they have a cool concept and, and, and they're actually paying me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I mean, very I, key. I, I'm very key. Oh, yeah, I, I would, I would do whatever they wanted. Like, like, oh, you want me to draw like the, like, like the the devil playing checkers, you know, with you know whoever. I, I'm fine. Uh, all right, cool. You know, back well, the tr- truck up. Well, that's what I said. I said one day uh, when when YouTube no longer does anything for us. I said, we'll just make our own beer and then you can make our labels because they're going to be all video game themed beers. And you know, one of them is definitely going to be a simple Jim Pilsner. 
Oh, yeah. <laughs> what, I'm not getting better than a Pilsner? Jesus. <laughs> now, come on, Jim. You ain't getting anything. What do you think you're getting? You think you're getting her sour? I mean, maybe. No, no. You, you know what you're getting. Jim's nice. crusty sour. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> oh god! <laughs> all all you do is you just take that. You just take the face from the simple gym, and you just make the eyebrows furrowed. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> the palms a little hairier. We do yeah. that, and then from that game, Jim, what's that game? Uh, it has a dude walk out with the belly. That's like welcome. And it's the fight Slaughter video. Sport. Uh, it, it's that's gonna be you, but with your belly button and you're being stinky. <laughs> Why does he have to be stinky? You see, when you first you know, started saying that, I was I was thinking of that gold, the, like the big fat guy with the golden axe, in, 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 you know, like one of the one of the bosses, like golden axe, it just kind of comes yeah. out. It's just that guy with that belly dude just sticks right out. Oh yeah, you're right. <laughs> I mean, that could work too. I'm just saying, you just need the stink lines in your belly button. <laughs> there's there's so many options for me. options are endless. Oh, hey, I, you know, it, it's an icon. It's a, a circle is an iconic shape. Yeah, this is true. It's universal. <laughs> And Jim, if we're gonna keep having people request the crusty corner, maybe we just need a picture to put up when it's time to put that up there. We, we need we need Rob to. Uh, we'll talk with him. We'll, we can get some ideas. You know what? what? I've seen what you two can do. I'll let you two. <laughs> <laughs> Famous last words. <laughs> uh, you're you're in trouble now. Yeah, I know. I, I this is my. I know what I. Do. It's too late to change. <laughs> So, Chambers, we mentioned uh, at the bonus episode and at the last episode, it was your birthday. So, once again, happy belated birthday, you old bastard. Thank you. I'm glad you're still standing and your eyes are straight for now. But for now. Uh, <laughs> what uh, what you what you drinking tonight? Well, Brian, from the Artifact Brewing Company, uh, it is their Help Sip Frank, uh, a dark Belgian that comes in at 14.2% alcohol. Whew. So I have a big old bastard can right here because they're one of those breweries that does all their canning on site. So uh, they have one location right now, kind of close to us, and they're going to be opening. And they're working on opening another one too. So they're doing pretty good for themselves. All their can, all their beers are based on like music references too. So I can't remember what song this is from, but they're real big into like a lot of uh, a lot of like '60s and '70s references for their uh, beer songs. Are they the ones on York? Yeah. Okay, that's what I thought. Okay, yeah, I haven't I haven't been to them yet, but now was that one you sampled there and decided let me bring one home, or you just said that would be a good one to take home regardless? Uh, I did not have this one while I was there. I had like most of their other stuff, so I was like, well, I didn't do this one, and I can't drive after a fourteen percent right now, so I'll take this one home. Yeah, let's be honest here. Right, I'm trying. <laughs> God damn it! I know. I know. <laughs> Now, uh, now, Rob, you drinking anything with us tonight? Uh, I don't really drink. It's I maybe know. like a like a once a year thing. It's like right now, it's like I got a Pepsi and a water. I'm like, <laughs> okay, that's all right. Now, wait. Now, if it's once a year, is it uh, is it a specific thing? Is it usually like around the holiday, or is it just you know what, what's what's your poison? Is it a, is it liquor, sometimes is it it, beer? It, I mean, it's like sometimes it, it'll be a holiday. Sometimes it'll just be like, hey, you know what? Today kind of sucked. I think it's time to, 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 to just, you know, crack open uh, the honey whiskey. There you, you know, go. And just, okay. just, just kind of, you know, go for it. it. It's just, I don't do it very much, so I'm very much a lightweight. So it's just like, yeah, you know, like like two 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 shots, I'm good. Yeah. I keep I keep it real light. I'm, I'm a cheap date. Don't worry. I do it a lot, too, and I am a lightweight and a cheap date, so it doesn't really matter. <laughs> yeah, I, it, it's, it's just, I... I used to have a high tolerance and everything because I was just, you know, drinking all the time. But then it just, it got to the point where it was just like, ah, eh, it's not so fun. So I was just like, all right. Then I just kind of limited it to like once a year. And it's just like that, at least that one day a year is like really good. Yeah. <laughs> no. And, and you know, what's funny about that is I think with Jim and I doing this, I mean, Jim, it is amazing. I dude arguably drinks just as much as he used to. And still. The tolerance is low. I mean, I you know, just you, don't work. You guys live in like, you know, like, like basically like beer country, you know, like where it's just like there. You got the breweries all over the place, and, and, and you know, all that. Like, I mean, oh, dude, I would probably surrounded. drink more if I was around that, you know. Yeah, well, and that's the thing is like, yeah, we do have great options, but it is funny because every so often, if I go off beer and like, like rum is something I haven't had in forever, but 
every once in a while, I'm like, you know what? Let me pour a, a rum and coke. And yeah, it hits me so much harder and faster than it used to. So that same deal, like, it, you take the training wheels off of when we were in our 20s. It's a different story. And the hangovers suck so much worse. So you don't even want to go that hard. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, what's, what's worse is like, yeah, like with the, you know, I, I have a medical condition. So it's one of those things where like it kind of hits me like 20 times worse where it's like, Ugh. like, oh, like, oh yeah, you know, you, you, you do a little, do a little whiskey and Coke and it's like, all right, this should just be, you know, like, oh, I'll just have this. It'll, it'll hit the stomach real hard. It'll hurt for a second, but then it's like, you get real goddamn nice real quick. Uh-huh. <laughs> yep. And then the next day you're like, why did I do that? <laughs> oh, by yeah, the way, nice. fucking, I, fucking daylight I, savings. Sorry to cut you off, Rob. I have to rant uh, for a second. I'll Do go not for it. take an hour of sleep away from a goddamn alcoholic. Like, <laughs> I'm up drinking for my birthday, and all of a sudden, we're like, my buddy looks over at me. He's like, hey, Jim, you know it's daylight savings, right? I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, well, you know how your phone just said two? I was like, yeah. He's like, look at it. And it was three. I was like, fuck! God damn it! <laughs> Jim, I, I, I've come to recognize <clears throat> that moment in the night between our discord and twitter when you're really getting drunk because you're starting to just blab and you have a lot of terrible takes to begin with but man when you're getting drunk it just becomes stupider and stupider and you like to like all of a sudden get confrontational i can tell like what am i trying there's a little bit of a bite in you and i'm like and you're still giving a terrible take while you're doing it but i saw your bitch fest you're like Fucking farmers and their candles, man. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, yeah, he's completely shot in the ass at this point. <laughs> yep. Hey, the glory of running a beer account is it's not that much of a shock when it comes out. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'm like, I'm like, here's the thing: the fact that I, you know, I, I've known you know Jim long enough to where I'm like, I, I get it, and the fact that yes, it is a beer account essentially. You, you always posted beers, all that kind of stuff. I'm sitting there, I'm just like, I did, I didn't even really raise an eyebrow when I saw it. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. don't know if that's good or bad. <laughs> it's all bad at this point. It, yeah, it's it's what you've come to expect. But uh, yeah, no. Speaking of beer, so today I am going with the New Trail Brewing's Bonfire Hazy Double IPA. So I'd say the past year, maybe two years, I've been talking about how the this is like one of the highest breweries and jim i don't know if you've noticed you go in any beer store anymore near us and like there's tons of shelves of their shit they have so many beers available yep um and don't get me wrong i said a lot of their stuff is good i think maybe a bit overpriced but uh this one's at 9.3 percent and it just it's so this is like i i said i've been waiting for a beer from them that made me go wow this one is doing it for me. It's got red wheat, which I don't know what the difference with different wheats are. Uh, Yme and Citra hops, which Yme I've never heard of. I know Citra very well. But uh, <clears throat> no, it's very tasty. I'm already almost done my first one. Obviously, because it's hazy, it's, you can't see shit through it. There's no sediment, though. Mm. And yeah, New Trail, this one did it for me. This and... I think I had one of their stouts that really impressed me, but uh, they're definitely like the hot new PA thing. So no matter where you are, I assume in a tri-state area at least, if you can get your hands on some new trail, give them a try. They're pretty damn good. Hmm, Interesting. No, it does look good. That is a thick boy, too. Does it drink thick, or is it just... uh... Surprisingly, no. I mean, and I know with hazies, they they look... This one does. it It sets a little bit heavy. So, and it's a 16 ounce, it's, it's a big boy can. So, um, yeah, it's gonna, it's gonna sit interesting tonight. I'll say that, especially after tacos. And I just made, uh, me and the family just made a giant batch of Irish potatoes and I had a couple of those. Mm. So those mix in with all this, it'll be, it'll be interesting. Yummy dum dum. <laughs> now, Rob, uh, you know, I know you're, you're busy with, with all your art, but what have you been gaming with, and what have you been doing the last couple of weeks? Oh, oh, uh, I've been kind of all over the place with that. I got a couple things. Uh, I just finished uh, Like a Dragon Ishin, which okay. is uh, well, wonderful, highly recommended. If, if, if you like the Yakuza games, mm-hmm. it's it's one of those ones where it's like, it, it, it goes down where it's it's not as heavy as, as, as a lot of the Yakuza games, but it's the combat is a lot more varied with, you know, with the sword play and stuff. Great mm-hmm. game. Um, I've been messing with Wulong, or Wolong, 
Bull Long, I guess. Uh, Fallen Dynasty. Um, okay. Oh, that's that one. Yeah, it just came available on Game Pass, right? Uh, yes, yes. Um, I've been messing with that one, and I'm terrible at it. And uh, I wouldn't have it any other way. It's 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 <laughs> nice. it, 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 it kind of has that Sekiro uh, kind of combat, but it's it's very zippy, and I'm and my timing is really and it's very based on being able to counter with you know, like doing all the counters with your timing and everything. And I'm awful at that stuff. So uh, yeah, I get I, I I get beat up every time on that one. Uh, Wild Hearts, uh, I kind of stopped on, but. I'll be going back to that one. It's Monster Hunter. Yeah. You, 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 go, you go on and off those things. Mm -hmm. um, and the last thing uh, is, uh, is, a, is, a, is a weird one. Uh, you, you heard of uh, the Xenoclash games? I've heard of them. I've never played. Yeah. Um, they just put out uh, one called... Uh, hold on. I've I'm, I'm got to actually pull up the title because I don't want to get it wrong. Especially since I'm suggesting it to people. I'm like, oh, hey. That's the one that's like impossible to say. Oh uh, well, it's it's one of those things where it's like, it, like you know, you could like if you try to come off the, off the top of your head, you're gonna get it wrong. Mm -hmm. But it, but it, it's called. I'm going down the list right now. Uh, Clash Artifacts of Chaos. Um, where it's 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 very bizarre, but I really like it. I I got it on Steam. It's it's like a thirty dollar game. Um. And it, it's one of those things where it's kind of it has that souls like kind of thing to it, but it's more of a beat em up. Oh, okay. That is one so, interesting ass looking game. It's like if Borderlands had sex with a yeah, you're like, like a, a, a like a weird gnarled penis monster man. Yeah, and, and, it's... and you just you just punch things to death. And the thing is, you you gain all these like like my character's doing like the boxer stance, so he basically carries himself like a boxer. And, and, and fights that way, but uh, like he's doing like Street Fighter moves. I unlocked a, a move where it's like, oh, I'm doing, I'm doing Shoryukens and all this, all this shit. I'm like, all right, that's kind of cool. I'm getting killed a lot, but um, you know, like the way it penalizes you is like, oh, uh, you die. You you will basically start like your your save point, and you have to go and find your body. Uh, okay, it's one of those. Okay. It, yeah, so it, it's like yeah, it's pretty rough like that, but it's. I don't know. It's one of those things where I'm like, it's kind of it's my sleeper game this year so far. Yeah. Well, actually, the more I'm looking at it, yeah, it's reminds me the color scheme reminds me of kind of Borderlands, and I'm getting vibes with seeing some of these monsters, kind of like where the wild things are. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. That's a really cool looking game. I think you might have sold me on at least trying it. I mean, there's also Atama, but uh, a personal bias on that. <laughs> <laughs> that's really really cool okay. what about you Jambers what you been playing I didn't have a shitload of time this past week to play anything uh, the one night I put a lot of time into Fury one of every Patreon reviews that we have coming up so that game is a tough son of a bitch we'll be getting to that in our review but uh, I'm sitting here listening to Rob talk about uh, that one game where like you know parrying is key mm -hmm. and that is very key in Fury and are oh you boy. still on the samurai guy? I haven't touched it since that day I played, so okay. yes, I am still there. But uh, yeah, uh, now I have to get back to that to finish that off. And uh, yeah, actually, when I was uh, all liquored up on Saturday night, played a shitload of Rock Band for the first time in years. So mm -hmm. my buddy just decided to whip it out, and I mean, I was so half-assed in the bag, I like, like, I feel bad about myself. The old addicted Jimmy, like, he would <laughs> scoff at playing a medium, but that's all I could do. It was all like straight four-four beats that I could keep up with, but. Boo. Luckily, uh, unfortunately, my buddy, uh, he struggled on easy. So someone still had to uh, carry most of the weight. So <laughs> it was our good old buddy, Maddie King. So, yeah, but no, we played that for hours. And, like, we would do, like, a set and then, like, take a shot. And then do, like, another three-song set and take another shot. So, yeah, we were real nice and shitty by the end of that. It was, like, four in the morning when we finished. But that was a lot of fun. I miss those games. But that's yeah. the only thing I can do, like, once or twice a year at this point without being, like, completely burnt out. Jim, that is one. I think it'll be worthwhile. You'll have to come over and we'll stream it. Yeah, and, you can do that. And, but you'll carry me because at my best, I can maybe do a medium. Maybe hard on some songs, but I was never even close to, I would even say good on those. So, yeah, you can carry me on that. 
Yeah, that was a problem for a while. I'm sure the latency will be wonderful trying to stream it in OBS and all that crap, but we'll see. We'll make it work. Ah, that'll be fine. Yeah, I, uh, speaking of Fury, um, <clears throat> so now, um, I think you're like a boss ahead of me. So I'm at the boss where it's the sniper. chick that's invisible. Yeah, the sniper. Yep. Um, yeah, she's the one before me. Yes, yeah, she's, um, yeah, Rob, have you ever played Fury? I have. It was, it's been a while, but um, wasn't that on Switch? Because I think I played it on Switch. Yeah, it is on Switch. It's on everything yeah. at this point, I think. Yeah, yeah, it, that that's what I. Re- I uh, I broke a Joy-Con playing that, so <laughs> I don't blame <laughs> you. Sounds about right. <laughs> uh, like I, I I know that one because I had like a a a really nasty blister on my thumb for like for, for a good solid week and a half. It pissed me off so much. Mm-hmm. I yeah, uh, don't think I made it very far in it, though. Probably not. The more I'm read, like, so I told Jim, I said, like, it shocked me because this is a game that is extremely decisive, divisive, and it's either like you you hate it, you think it's too hard, the control for like dodging and parrying are a little delayed, which in a game that requires immense precision. Like, you have to build in the factor of the delay. And it's like, you can't have a delay on shit like that if that's that important. But, um, I, yeah, like, I'm so I'm one boss behind Jim. It's it's just grueling. It, that's the best way I can describe it, where it's, like, kind of an interesting idea where it's, I think it's nine bosses total. And it's just boss fights, but it's the same feeling I got when playing God of War and doing those Valkyrie fights. And I'm like... This isn't that fun. The walking stages suck too, and I mean, you know, it does it for you. You just walk, <clears throat> hit the button. I know. Well, especially once I discovered that you could just hit the button because before then, if you try to manually do it, oh my god, is that annoying? Um, but the music's good. the The visuals are interesting. A lot of lot of really bright neon colors and purple. Very cel shaded. Yep. Um, but yeah, I'm very curious. Once you and I both beat it, Jim, and we come together and do the review how we actually feel about it. But I, I did put a little bit more time into that. And then in between getting my ass whooped in that game, I'm still going through Horizon Zero Dawn, which is funny because I was talking to our buddy Blade who just finished, uh, I guess, the newer one. And, yeah, he loves those games. And I'm still kind of like, man, I'm not seeing... I'm not, I'm not, like, pulled in yet. And is that another one, Rob? Have you had a chance to tr- try that out yet? Oh, which one? Uh, Horizon Zero Dawn. Um, yeah, I, I finished that one in the DLC like a, a, a while ago. It was one of those games that like I bought off PSN for like ten bucks, mm-hmm. and then completely forgot about it for a year. Yep. <laughs> and, and then like they, they so they, far. <laughs> yeah, and then they announced the sequel, and I was just like, ah, might as well play it. And I did it, and I really enjoyed it. I, I, I really, it was, it was one of those ones where it was just like, it, it hit the spot right at that perfect time. Um, okay. but then I played the sequel and I just didn't care anymore. I hear I've heard that too. Yep. Um, the, and, and the thing is, it's the sequel is a, a lot better looking. It's just that like, it's probably because it's so soon after playing the first yeah. one and then going in like a month later on, on the second one and then just going like, all right, I kind of had enough. I, I'm going to put this away for like a year and I'll, yeah, I'll just, I'll just treat this like the now. other one. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. I should have waited till it was 10 bucks. <laughs> yeah no i it, well it's funny because last year when we were doing our challenge like i did god of war and of course i my goal was kind of doing the same thing like oh i'll play ragnarok as soon as it comes out but i'm i'm like you know what i'm gonna wait because that was at least a 40 or 50 hour game and i was like ah, i don't know if i'm ready to just dive right back in so i'm waiting till like this summer basically giving it an exact year same deal because i don't want I really don't want to get burned out on these things. So, yeah, I'm very curious how I'm going to feel once I finish a game. But I just got up to the point where, like, you really realize, like, uh, it, it, it's like you, the more the map is opened up out west and, like, you're really now, like, cleansing corrupted machines and seeing, like, what I call, like, the Matrix areas where it's, like, really machine heavy. So it's... It's getting more and more interesting. I'm just curious where it goes. Because I feel like, you know, the thing that annoys me is the constant searching for things, crafting, yada, yada, yada. 
but maybe that goes away more in the end and becomes more about the combat. I don't know. It seems um, divisive in the Discord, where like some people mm -hmm. seem to really like it, and some are just like, yeah, it's kind of everything I've seen before, and it didn't grab me. Weird one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's just that I, I think that like they, it's one of those games that they could have waited a little more time before they threw out a sequel to it. You know, like like let mm -hmm. people let people miss it because they only just released it on PC like a few months beforehand. Yeah. So pe so people it was still kind of fresh on people's minds that first one. So that when they got to the sequel, it was just like, uh, like immediate for a lot of people. Like seeing it, like oh, we're we're just seeing this game for the first time over here. It's like it's majorly promoted and all this thing. It was still fresh. So it's like you mm -hmm. could have waited a year or two, and. Before. And and done something a little bigger, maybe you know. Mm -hmm. And, and, and it doesn't help. But like, stop putting it up against guaranteed game of the year winners, like Breath of the Wild and then Elden Ring. It's like yeah. you're just killing it by doing that. I mean, that's how that's how it like when it originally came out. That's why I was just like, I don't really care, and I, I just played Breath of the Wild instead. Yeah. Um. So did most people. <laughs> and, and and then and then it was like ten bucks on a holiday sale like a year later and I'm like, all right. Yeah, now it's reasonable. <laughs> I, bought, I bought that and God of War, forgot about them both. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's very simple to do these days. There's definitely like too much going on. But Jim, actually, I was just reading our notes, speaking of games. We gotta mention a little giveaway. Oh, yeah, we have a giveaway. So uh our buddy, good old Game Whisperer, Dino, he uh, provided us with a code for... Oops, sorry, wait a second. Oh, uh, yeah, Company of Heroes 3. So uh, if you want to get a free Steam code off us, just comment. Brian, what do you want the people to comment? We didn't talk about this. <sighs> Jim's a blub blub. God <laughs> damn it, this is what I get for not preparing. Yes, comment <laughs> Jim's a blub blub. And you'll be entered into the thing. <laughs> Simple as that. You Go know to what? YouTube, comment Jim's a blub blub. Yeah. Or just hashtag blub blub. <laughs> Jim, you put me on the spot. I, I, I had to go funny. So. This is what I get. Hoisted by my own petard. It's fine. Wonderful. <laughs> Oh god. So yes, I, go you know, to I've... So yes, whatever whatever podcast app you're listening to this on, head over to the YouTube and comment hashtag blah blah and you'll be entered. <laughs> Jim, listen. We love I hate everyone. Myself. We love everyone that listens to us, follows us. We truly appreciate it. And we also gotta give a huge, huge shout out to our patrons and especially JD Mains who just increased his tier. Dude, we really, truly, truly appreciate Absolute it. Absolute crazy person. We have to, we will think of a better tier for you because you're at a tier we didn't even think would exist. So, right, he's been two you. tiers we didn't think existed. I know. So, we have some making up to do. We, we are, something's coming. Maybe Jim's nudes. I don't know. The tassel, <laughs> t the tassel tier. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Damn it. No. <laughs> So, so Jambers, what questions we got this week from Patreon? Patreon.com slash drink a beer and play a game. Where for as little as $2 a month, you can ask a question and we will answer on each and every single one of these Power Hour podcasts. First up from TJ, the Kite Man. So I've always noticed that uh, canned beer out of an ice chest tastes different than out of a fridge. Why do y'all think this is? And JD Mains commented on that. I always thought the same thing. So... There actually is a reason for that, and it's because you are technically getting it colder than any fridge can, because the temperature point of ice is colder than the fridge, so therefore it is colder, leaves a condensation, keeps the can a little bit colder. The second you take it out of a fridge, it's probably 10 degrees warmer than a, than a chest full of ice would be, so you're getting at kind of that optimal, optimal cold point. But actually, it's doing you a disservice if you're doing craft beers because, as Jim and I have learned, you actually should let those warm up a little bit, almost close to room temperature. But if you're doing, like, the regular uh, light lagers and shit, you want them as ice cold as possible, which is why they probably taste the best right out of a chest. So, and one little trick, if you're in a pinch and you want it to get cold really fast... Put a little salt with your ice that lowers the freezing point and the melting point and that'll get your stuff colder even faster i did not know this yeah 
So there's a little science there. <laughs> we're, we're, we're learning. Yeah, we're learning today. <laughs> now I've forgotten something important. <laughs> Jim's like, shit, what's my daughter's birthday again? <laughs> yeah, oh well, the wife will remember. <laughs> and next up from JD Maines. Who is the better stand up, Dave Chappelle or Bill Burr? Ooh. Are we talking all time career or right now? I mean, he left it open, so however you want to interpret it. Rob, we'll let you go first. Um, I lean more Bill Burr. Personally. Okay. I mean, Dave Chappelle's good. But there's you know, one of those things where like a, a lot of a, a lot of the, like the more recent comedy specials, it kind of would stop being funny and he would just lecture you. And it kind of reminds me of like later days, uh, you know, Lenny Bruce, where he mm-hmm. would just read court documents to you and then yell at you. <laughs> and, and I'm like, I don't, <laughs> That's I, so I don't accurate. I, I don't want to be yelled at. So I'm, I'm like, Bill Burr is, is at least like at least he's yelling at you like a guy from Boston would where he's still being funny. And he's being a dick, but it's like you you you, can't, you just you get it more. And I'm more of that age for that. Mm-hmm. So it, it's like it, it's it's sort of like, hey, it's a guy down on the street corner, you know, just like just talking shit. And I'm just like, all right, that shit. yeah, yeah, and, and like that's more fun to me because it, because it's not so serious, you know. Yeah, no, I think I, I'm I, I think I'm with you there. Like I think Chappelle and his prime was way better. Like his, a couple of his specials, like you, no one can really touch. But oh, I think yeah. Burr's been more consistent over, like, his entire career. Like, yeah, Chappelle's a lot of old man yells at Cloud for a while. And it's like, all right, all right let's move on to something else. But Burr, like, you know, he knows how to, like, space out his sets and shit like that. So I'd probably for just, like, if I was going to go see a show right now, I'd probably be more inclined to see Burr. I'd see either one. But Burr would definitely, like, get my money more. I, I love his podcast because it's basically just him just working out sets. Just, you know, just a, 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 every it's like every couple of days, it's him working out a new set. And it's and it's like this is the guy like he got into a Star Wars production. Usually when you get into like some kind of Disney thing, you clean up your act a little bit. And he's like, nah, fuck that, you know. And he just <laughs> now nah, I'm still gonna make fun of the WNBA. Fuck this. <laughs> yeah, he's, like, he's still still doing the same the same stuff. And it's like you know what, he he's definitely that 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 the real dude on the block. You know, like that's the guy. You dude, know, for he's me. been running that podcast for like 15 years. Like that was one of the first podcasts I mm-hmm. subbed to back in like 2009. I remember yeah. him being on like O and A talking about it. Check that. I was like, oh, I'll check out this podcast thing. That's when he was just like yammering into his phone when he'd be sitting at like an airport. Dude, that now he has a nice mic and yammers it. <laughs> exactly. Same format. Just, just like I, I'm in my kitchen. I'm gonna talk about some shit that annoyed me today. I'm gonna bitch about the Patriots and fat people for the next hour. Strap in. <laughs> yeah. Now I, th- I'm pretty much there with you guys uh, it's so tough because Chappelle's killing him softly still probably goes down as my favorite stand-up special of all time like oh god if, if it's special. not yeah. if it's not one it's like in the top three it's it's up there so it's like I love that so much but the same deal Rob to what you said is I feel like Chappelle is at the stage now where he's still like his stand-up still will have plenty of funny parts but there's so much more where it's very preachy and he wants everything he says to be like, I feel like he's not having fun like he used to. Whereas now it's like, I want to say something with profound. It's impact. a lot angrier, a lot, yeah, it's, like, a lot angrier, but not trying to be funny with it. Like, yeah, he might say something funny in between here and there, but then when he'll get to that part of the set where he'll just kind of lecture you and just kind of be yeah. angry at you. It's just like, I, I'm not having fun here anymore. Like, this is just a guy yelling at me. I'm like, and that, that's, I, and I that's get my it. problem with it. Yeah, he's like I, he wants to be profound. It's almost like he's like having a therapy session with his crowd and like working the shit out. Like he he knows, and you know he knows how to do comedy. And I think like the problem is, like with the Chappelle show, we got all of his funny week by week by week. It's still one of the best skit shows I think ever done. Oh, it's still and the then, best one by far. Uh, yeah, it, it, was, and, it was also run through, you know, some filters, you know, on uh-huh. that one. And, and this is more of that unrefined, like, this is a guy who's very... And here's the thing. A lot of that anger is justified. Absolutely oh, yeah. justified. But at the same time, it, you know, it, it's like you're, you're here for a comedy show. You want to have fun. Yeah. And, and to what both you guys said, Burr is always more consistently, like, I'm going to laugh more... But I even feel like him, the last, like, three specials he did, like, 
if it if they're an hour, there's like 25 minutes where it's like really funny, and then there's a lot of what I feel like is filler now. And he is very like he's becoming a little too preachy too. And I feel like he's actually now better like off stage, like almost from his podcast or when he's on other podcasts riffing like that when he is just kind of bullshitting and, and talking about things that annoy him. Whereas he's becoming a little preachy too. And he's like kind of getting annoying with how he's doing it, but then he'll throw in his really funny bits. Like the WNBA is probably his most well-known bit from his latest one. Yeah. And it's like, cause that feels like old school bear. Whereas other parts of his special, you're kind of like, eh, okay, it, it's fine. So, and I, I have to it, go with, I'm sorry, Brock. Yeah. No, go ahead. No, I was just no. gonna say it's probably. I think we're seeing it's kind of tough to stay like angry and still funny when you're like you know super successful. You don't have to be angry anymore. Being you're still trying. To, you're still trying to be relatable, but like you know you're not relatable anymore. Yeah. So yeah, I, I would say right now uh, it's it's got to be Burr. I still think if you which one has my, my favorite stand up, it's gonna be Chappelle with Killing Him Softly. Um, but Burr is more consistently funny overall, so I'll probably go with him. I mean, one of my favorite uh, Burr bits was not even from a comedy special or anything or even, you know, him appearing anywhere. It was literally him on his podcast talking about uh, when Antonio Inoki fought the great Antonio. Oh, and that's was, a great one. Uh, and it's just him doing this play-by-play in the most, like, confused Boston I've ever heard you know, of just him going like, look at this fat guy and it's like, like, oh, he's getting the shit kicked out of him, and he's like all amazed by, and it's just like watching this guy sort of see it, and it's almost like you're you're watching him see it for the first time, and he's formulating something, and he's being really funny about it, but even he doesn't know what's gonna happen, so it's sort of like he's he's getting surprised while he's doing this, I'm like that, I'm like that's a masterclass on how to put together a bit without even having any. It's like, oh, someone just sent me this video and told me to watch it. And then he yeah. made any and he made uh, like a half hour bit out of it, you know, of just of just watching this thing and being amazed by by this weird looking fat guy getting the shit kicked out of him by Antonio <laughs> Noki. Dude, that, that poor fucking guy, this poor like regional <clears throat> schlub who like you know his whole gimmick was not selling anything, going against like the god of Japan basically. And, like, oh, you do not disrespect that man. Turns out he wasn't very much a poor schlub. He was an absolute dick who thought he was better than he was. Is that That's- what it was? Yeah, he he was a Canadian wrestler who, like, you know, he he was making a lot of money. He was he was actually you know pretty. Isn't deep, he like a town hero, up. right? In one uh, like area. Uh, I I believe so. I don't know exactly what town though, but it was one of those things where he was one of those guys who was very arrogant about about you know, his wrestling and everything. And his whole thing was you know oh I'm I'm this indestructible I'm you know the great Antonio that kind of thing. And then when he went to Japan, he he just straight up told you know Antonio Doki, he's just like, I'm not selling shit for you. Yeah, and and, and, we, and like guy. he's going he's going to the like the guy in Japan and, and going, nah, screw you, I'm gonna do what I want. Like in the middle of the match, and it was and he was just like bullshit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's never gonna work out well for you. Yeah, yeah I think- he, he learned a valuable lesson that day. I think that in like the uh, the watch along to like John Lennon Yoko Ono with Chuck Berry, it like, <laughs> was just like screeching. I think those are like the two best segments ever to come from his podcast. Uh, man, I, I just remember that clip. Just the second Yoko Ono starts it starts up, mm-hmm. and, and, and you see his face change. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, he he's a guy who won over Philly by bashing the city during a stand up set. So I mean. The man, when the man goes off, the man goes Listen, off, and he knows we, how to we, do it. We respect it, man. Stand up for yourself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it looks like we're all in agreement. And that wraps up the Patreon questions for this week. So once again, thanks you to everyone out there for all the support. We really do appreciate it. All right, Chambers. So we are back now and uh, leading right into a good beer topic. I guess my question is, how's that 14 percent are treating you? <laughs> <laughs> it's kicking. Uh, it it is very smooth it's almost too smooth and yeah like i'm not like super drunk or anything right now but like i'm definitely feeling warm in the face like i just uh took a pee break and i was like ah the cheeks are getting a little rosy all right shit's that 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 good warming of the cheeks yeah that's yep Mm -hmm. well interestingly enough and you provided this article 
I don't know if somebody sent it to you, but it came from kgun9.com. Basically, um, uh, Tucson's Channel 9 ABC. Yes. And archaeologists discovered a 5,000-year-old tavern with food still in its bowls. Now, it's funny because I actually did see this. And, uh, hey, I guess a uh, point of pride for PA. <clears throat> it's uh, Holly Pittman, who's a professor in the University of Penn in their History of Art department. Um, and she's the project director who found this partially open air, partially kitchen area. Um, it's pretty interesting. I got my first thought was like, how did you find food? And if you read into the article, there's a lot of speculations. Like they, they don't know it for sure. They definitely said this seems to be an oven. This seems to be an open area where they were storing food. Um, but it was apparent something like a natural disaster must have happened where people had to leave, like either died or left immediately and left a site in the condition where it would still have food in the bowls. And it was only 19 inches below the surface too. Like it wasn't like it was super deep or buried. So it must be like a real out of their area, but it is cool too. How like it showed that like, this was like kind of like a major hub back, you know, 5,000 years ago, mm -hmm. as you're saying. And people back then in major hubs kind of did what they did now. They just go to meeting places, eat food, drink, have a good time, and shit like that. So, two things. I'm going to put on my little professor cap here. <laughs> Only because my very limited but specialized knowledge, as you know, Jim. Um, so, one of the things I found interesting. So, there's some debate as to who like ever brewed the first beers. And one there's one argument that said, um, you know... It's not really beer, but the Chinese in about 7,000 BC, it's called like Koi or Q or something to that effect. Not exactly beer, but it's closest to beer that you can think of. But then what we know as modern day beer was in Mesop Me Mesopotamia. Mesopotamia. Yep. Um, and that was more about like 3,500 or 4,000 BC. So that's why I'm interested when they're saying this is like a 5,000-year-old thing. I'm kind of like, well, this is probably before they really had beer, but it at least was, would be a place where they'd gather, have food, and like you're saying. And I'm reading a book right now that talks about like the history of humans and Homo sapiens and you know just our evolution and everything. And it talks about like finding old tablets. And one of the first ways we ever recorded math was keeping track of barley and wheat on tablets and like how you um you write that down that's like the first one of the first recorded things they found and were able to actually translate because it was important to keep track of your inventory they so had I to like know to how much booze they could make that's Wonder. what i like to that's what i like to say when i read that i'm like yeah they were drunks all the way back then too so so yeah, Rob, was like, you, oh, sorry go ahead it was like once they figured out, you know, like the, like the barley's and, and, and the weeds and all, you know, like how, how to ferment them properly and all that kind of stuff. So like when they figured that out, it's before that it was it was mostly just like oh they would ferment fruit, you know, and and, and mm -hmm. do things do things like that and, and get kind of the same effect. And it was just like oh they found a more efficient way to do it. And it's, it seems like humans early on. We're just trying to find more efficient ways to not deal with reality at that moment mm -hmm. in time. And, and and it just seems like that's the big quest was like, okay, we need to figure out how to get a knee bearded real quick because this cave fucking sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, you're not that far off. I mean, the, the idea was that it was always hunter-gatherers, and they might have known the land way better than anyone even modern day would have known. But with the uh, agricultural revolution, and once they started farming, and wheat and barley was easy to grow relatively, that was also the commodity. And and wouldn't you know, people, just nerds who like numbers, were like, we need a way to keep track of all this. Because before, it was just like, okay, you went out, hunt it. No one was storing the shit. They needed to get silos and shit. And yeah, eventually it turned into beer production and food and... There you go. That's how how we started having basically math on paper in a very simple form. So there you go. Thank your local drunk. That's right. So I love without the drunks, there's no math proven. So, so Jim, to your point, yeah, it is. Back then, even then, they had communal areas. 
you went over there and you just uh you ate you drank you did whatever you did but yeah it, it is really cool like i said i wish and i hope they get more out of it <clears throat> that they say like what could have happened that's only 19 inches deep and like would have caused everyone to it, it they must have died i doubt they just left it there and food is still on the table that way so right. i don't know if it's kind of like the um they didn't find any bodies or do they no well no. at least not yet huh. so it, it can't be something like uh what's that pompeii like where right, it's a that volcano. instant like ash death yeah yeah so it's not that so it's like well then what the fuck could it have been that would have <laughs> no mummies jerking off were found Damn well, I, I mean, if you're talking, you know, that that deep in the ground, it could have been, you know, something as simple as a mudslide, and and like they just didn't bother, you know, digging it out or anything. You know, people, it out. You, you know, but like a, a mudslide could mess up a town real goddamn quick. Oh so, yeah, the, you know, it, that could have easily been a thing that happened. That's what I'm thinking. That's that would be more my theory. It would be like, oh, something like that, where it's like, yeah, you know, fast moving thing like that. You just yeah. bug out of there and just go somewhere else. It's like, well, you know, this town's screwed. Get out of here. Yeah. I Because I, that's why I was like, well, if it was something like it was a small tribe and, like, another tribe was invading and they went out and fought and all died, the other tribe still would have probably came in and not just left food on the table. Like, something would have happened. You, so, yeah. You would I'm have a lot more curious. evidence. Yeah. Uh, uh, so, uh, of, of, of some kind of damage like that. Yeah. It, it's. It, it, the, the way because I saw the pictures and I'm like, I mean, obviously the excavation, you know, it, they're cleaning it up as they're going, you know, carefully mm -hmm. and all that. But it's like it, it doesn't look like uh, anything's really like damaged in, in any way, really bad. So that's why I was thinking maybe like a mudslide or something like that, because that'll just get into everything. Yeah. And 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 you're talking, you know, probably a culture that doesn't exactly have the you know the the equipment to dig themselves out of that kind of stuff. So they just kind of went, screw it. Yeah. <laughs> just, <laughs> oh, <rebuild>. well. <laughs> yeah. No, I, like you said, I, I, I love, uh, you know, I, I said, Jim and I said, as you get older, I don't know what it is. Our dads were this way. I feel like it's just a natural thing in men. You become more interested in history. So I like seeing shit like this the older I get. So it's something, uh, you know, if more pops up. I'll definitely look into it because it, it's, it's very cool. The more you learn, you're like, Oh shit, we really haven't changed that much. I'm gonna say, Rob, when you hit 35, did you hit that wall of just like, oh, I love history now and all things history? <laughs> the weird thing is, I was always like that. I was always into history since I was like a little kid. Because it, 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 I, I mean, like mm -hmm. when I grew when I grew up, it was one of those things where my dad was you know, majorly into, like he was a military dude, but he was way into you know like a lot of medical stuff. Um, he did uh, biomedical engineering. And he was kind of like, hey, you know, like, you're my son and you're at least competent. You know, <laughs> here's some books on biomedical engineering and here's like some history stuff. And we ended up having this weird library of books of just all kinds of history books, all kinds. Of, we didn't own an encyclopedia, but we had every other every kind of reference thing. Um, uh, you know, medical oddities, you, you know, like just all kind, like stuff about like equipment, all kind, and like that was mostly my education when I was a little child. It was like dealing, like it was like with school, I was a horrible student, but when I came home, I studied that stuff. Yep. yep. And, and, and it was a lot more interesting. So it was like a lot of you know, a lot of like deep history stuff that they were not covering in school. Like that's what I was, I was more interested in. It's like. Like, oh, like, here's how the Egyptians actually did build the pyramids. You know, like, people are just being weirdly racist about it. You know, when they're saying they could have. <laughs> you know, it's yeah. like, 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 oh, aliens. they. Uh, Only oh, aliens. They, yeah, they, they aliens. actually, they, they actually uh, uh, understood how, how to use, you know, like, logs and pulleys. <laughs> Meanwhile, historians yeah. are like, they can't do this. They're brown. They can't yeah. figure this out. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but then then you, you make the conclusion that uh, I think like Quentin Reviews uh, coined it was uh, was that uh, maybe uh, the aliens hate white people because you notice they don't help any of the white people build stuff. <laughs> yeah, it's got a point. <laughs> you know what? Watching seventeen billion hours of Garfield actually did something for his brain. He made a good point. Damn it! Oh, but th this was like two years before he went into becoming a Garfield channel. Oh, okay, before the iCarly era, <laughs> uh, yeah, he did a whole. He did a whole. Um, uh, it was like a big saga of History Channel stuff, like, like oh, back when it was the Hitler Channel, 
and, and then uh, it was like one of those things where he looked at one of those shows where there like it was people going to like Argentina trying to find evidence that like it would survive the war or whatever. Yeah. And uh, and their evidence was a a picture of a little old man in a driveway. <laughs> and, it, and, and it turned You're out like, that case picture, closed. <laughs> Uh, uh, the big spoiler is that uh, the picture of the little old man was a picture from the 1970s of Mo Howard. Really? <laughs> and and the thing is, though, uh, on this History Channel show, they were trying to match up pictures of Hitler to this man's face, and it's like that's Mo Howard. See, like before, if it was curly, then no one would have been confused. Who's the dick? <laughs> this is what Jim would have done. This is a Jimism right there. Oh, it, it, like that was like the the most amazing thing, and, and the way the way Quentin reviews lost his mind over it. it's like that's Mo fucking Howard. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> but they actually based a, a, a series on on History Channel about this, mm -hmm. and and like that was the conclusion. And and the thing is, in the show, they never went, "Oh, this is Mo Howard." They were like, "This could possibly be him." It's like. No! It's no. a picture you can find on Google! <laughs> oh, oh, it, like from 1975 or something like that. Like, like basically right around the time he died of just an elderly Mo Howard just standing just in a driveway. <clears throat> Poor guy. Oh. <laughs> Dude, do, do, TLC's the Thousand Pound Sister channel now. Like, education's dead. It's over. We're all screwed. Listen, yeah. Jim, women have the... Was it the, the... What's the one with all the Christmas? Hallmark Channel and Bravo... Men have TLC. And no, we don't have TLC channel. anymore. TLC is all reality, shitty reality shows. And uh, oh, well, I haven't watched. I was going to so. say Honey Boo Boo, <laughs> but I'm dating myself there. No, like even fucking like the Shark fuck Week. Honey Boo Boo. You never remembered the Honey Boo Boo craze like ten years ago? Jim, we've been over this. My ignorance to many things. I don't even watch TV, and, and I know Honey Boo Boo. Like, what's wrong with you? We I have, live I, such I, a better I, like carefree life of not knowing this bullshit than I, we well, do. I really do. <laughs> Like, like, man, I, I, I wish, I wish I, I knew how you lived more because, man, I would have missed so much bad stuff. <laughs> it, I, I'll be honest. Since I was in college, I probably haven't watched anything live on TV, except sports, and that's HBO, like some HBO shows when they come on. Like, I don't watch it. So it's like, yeah, I purposefully tune out to anything modern pop culture related. But as Jim knows, I have an encyclopedia of knowledge. If you if, if you say a random actor, I'll be like, oh, yeah, they were in this with this and this. And, this. and he'll be like, God damn it. Why do you know that? <laughs> yeah. Mo movies and yeah, shit like that. I'm, I'm deep in. But yeah, modern shows. Yeah. No. I, yeah, I'm, I I'm like that. I'm like that with really like super nerd shit. So I, I, yeah. I, 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 to, I totally understand that one. <laughs> ah, but Chambers, speaking of beer and speaking of uh, something that's right behind you, your boys at Molson Coors have been uh, indicted and basically told you got to stop making fun of others and saying that their beer has no flavor and tastes like water. Which is funny coming from the company that makes Keystone Light because that's basically water. Um, <laughs> sir, please De oh, don't oh, deny oh. it. We did we did a taste test, Jim, and we're gonna do another blind one. And I can't wait till you go. Huh? This one doesn't taste. Oh, that good. oh, we're, we're gonna do one with like Bush, Natty, and Keystone, and I know I'm gonna get it wrong, and then I'm gonna have to fucking kill myself after. Yeah. But yes. So the big bad enemy of all of craft beer, ABN at Bev and Heiser Bush. Uh, they scored a big win with uh, basically their biggest competitor of Molson Coors for the macro era. Basically, they went to, uh, what is this called? Uh, the National Advertising Division, which is an ad industry self-regulatory group saying, uh, can, can you make them stop saying we taste like water, please? It's not nice. That's basically what it came down to. What I love about this article is the balls. They've both gone back and forth a million times, saying, like, this one uses corn syrup. This one does this. this. Isn't that the whole point to kind of talk shit? Like, how did Blue Moon get away? And I forget which one Blue Moon's under. Of course. But, yeah. <clears throat> they got under a thing where they're making fun of, like, the two. It, it, well, they made fun of themselves. They made fun of Miller that's and my, Coors in that commercial. That's so. my point. Like, yeah. they kind of, like, took the piss out of themselves there. 
Listen, most of the world knows Miller and Coors and all those, bud, they're all kind of exactly the same. One is a little sweeter, as we discovered <clears throat> when we did a blind taste test, but it's like, yeah, you should be able to take shots at your enemies a little bit. And I like, it's like, basically, they're being sued for defamation. <laughs> like, you can't prove that it tastes like water. And like, the background to it, I'm just like, come on, man, this is a real, I, I look at it kind of like a bitch move, the same way that AT&T had to stop using the phrase like 5G evolution because you need a better network because Verizon's like, we know we suck. Stop saying it. <laughs> and they're like, come on, man. You should be able to do that. That makes commercials funny. That should spark. Like, remember all the shit with like Mac making fun of like Windows and shit back in yep. the day? I'm Mac. I'm a PC. Yep. Yeah. Like, that's what makes funny commercials. And it's funny because, like, the uh, the National Advertising Division, it's not, like, legally binding. It's not a court case. No. And its judgments are, like, but, like, everyone seems to just participate with it. So, like, most advertisers will just, like, listen and comply. So maybe yeah. they, like, give you enough of a background and say, like, hey, like, you know, we're not really the legal guys, but we could probably point you in the direction of how the legal thing could go, so you should probably listen to us. I don't know. It's a gray area. I mean... <clears throat> Rob, what do you think? Is this is this an over bitchification? <laughs> um, I, it's one of those things that I'm surprised it's still a thing that goes on because uh, I, it was it used to be you know the major thing with advertising, where you know, you'd have like oh this product is better than this product, but then um, I know there's some kind of regulation with something where you can't really sit there and like really shit on another brand anymore. Because they used to do like the old Coke and Pepsi ads. I was gonna just, say the Pepsi, where, yeah. where, where they where they would just straight up just you know like oh yeah like this Coke is dog shit, mm -hmm. <laughs> and 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 just like straight, they would just completely just bash the product, uh, or like you can't say this soap is better than this soap. You just have to say oh other leading brands. So I always thought that was kind of a thing that we already kind of settled. I didn't know beer was still doing this. It seems like they're a little behind the times with it. Well, um, I, I didn't know it either. I, I saw yeah. this and I went, I don't think I've ever seen an ad. It's a very anything. antiquated argument because a lot of other yeah. brands stopped doing that stuff like 20, 30 years ago. It, it, like, like, like if you look at like a dish so bad, they'll say other leading brands. They won't say the brand. They won't show mm -hmm. the brand. They won't just straight up go, hey, look at, the, look at this box of Cascade. Throw that in the trash. Mm -hmm. you, know? <laughs> you know, fuck you, Mr. Clean. Yeah, the, yeah, they'll, they'll just be like, "Hey, here's a vague thing of like uh, a nondescript kind of bald man on the package," and just go, you know, that stuff. Yep. It, it, where, where they weren't very blatant about like, "Oh, this product is crap," because companies have sued in the past over that. I think Coke actually sued Pepsi over that stuff because they do like the Pepsi challenge stuff, mm -hmm. I, 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 and and it was all just like, "Oh, we hate this Coke. This Coke is terrible." They haven't and, done but, that in a but, while. You're right. But yeah. at, the, at the time, it was when they were doing the new Coke, which was terrible. So yeah. so they were kind of right. It was just that they, they were not too keen on having their product bash so hard. And, and that really is what turned public perception so harshly towards Coke. It, it, it was, was at that time, like Pepsi was, was, the, was the king for a little bit. Because it was just like the way they hammered them back then with that Pepsi challenge stuff. Uh, there were lawsuits over that stuff. So it was so like the fact that this is happening now over like beer is a little weird to me. But at the same Very time, weird. they should probably look at you know any old precedents and that kind of stuff and kind of go, maybe we should just shut up. Well, <clears throat> that that's why people love to say like, I hate the term modern console wars. Like it's a a real thing. Like fan bases are annoying. But think about like. Genesis was shitting on the NES when it came out. And then Super NES shown Genesis. Like they had direct commercials. Like Genesis does what NES don't. Like, like straight up saying, like, your product shit, we're doing better. Um, you don't see that. You've never seen an Xbox or a PlayStation call each other out or whatever it is. Well, PlayStation it, was the last one to actually do that kind of thing. They, they would have the Crash Bandicoot outside the Nintendo building screaming at them yep, through a megaphone. Yep. <laughs> um, that was really the last time that stuff kind of happened because at, at that time 
that was when things really started to change where it's like hey maybe we should focus on our product and how it's how, how it's a better product without having just, to, w- yeah. without having to resort to that because when they did those commercials they weren't talking about how great their product was they were going mm-hmm. this is at least it isn't this shit yeah it well is. dude phone companies were doing that up when i saw this i said it does make sense because i remember seeing whoever did the commercials it must have been at&t it's like here's our coverage here's the comp here's the competitors coverage. they still do it like they're like oh with more coverage than verizon or some shit like that like well, well that's where it's like am i memory still- holding this or is it like seem like I, only like last year they're still doing it that. it must um, have and it's in a way recently but I think it was a lot of those things where people figured out that those map things that they show are completely uh, just made up bullshit. bullshit. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it, 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 like, it's just complete made up. Because most of the time they're using the same map, they just change the color on it. Um, <laughs> it'll be like, like, oh, like our company yeah, color exactly. is blue, our company color yep. is red. And it'll just, they'll just change the color of it. We're um, just, so we're better. Yeah. Well, it just cracks me up because I look at something like advertising the whole point is to sell a prod and at the end of the day no matter what jim and i've said uh ironically on the last bonus episode positivity doesn't sell throwing negativity out there and kind of shitting on someone else it'll just sell more so it's probably easier tactic not saying it's the right tactic but uh i knew advertising was goofy as shit when red bulls had to stop saying they give you wings because that it didn't actually give you wings, and they it had gives to you change, heart palpitations. It, it, they had to change the term "wings" the way you normally spell it to adding more eyes in it, so it wouldn't be legally confusing if someone thought they were going to gain wings from drinking Red Bull. I'm like, come on, people! I think it really like, ebbs and flows with the time. You know, it's like you'll have you'll have your. your I mean. You're talking like uh, advertising back in like the '50s. It would you know, it would be like like oh like these cigarettes are really wonderful, uh, and and and, yeah, all, yeah. and and all like all this kind of stuff. But they you know they'd be like oh well it's less tar than the, than that other crappy brand whatever. So like it was kind of as they would go along, it really depended on the time because sometimes mm-hmm. the positivity about the product will work. Like when you look at like Nintendo, when they advertise their stuff. It is actually more on a positive and more focus on what exactly it is, or focusing on the play pattern that mm-hmm. they that they kind of expect around it. Like when they when they showed the Wii, it was the two Japanese guys showing up people's houses and and, and all these white people being really confused, and then all of a sudden they established the play pattern, and here's yep. the family being together, and like this is a cool like you know thing, and look at this weird function that it's doing, you know. And it, and it sold it more on the merits of what it was and the feeling that it's supposed to evoke with it, um, as opposed to, you know, like going, this is better than this thing. It's just going, hey, this is just another option. This is a cool thing. And people bought that thing like crazy. Now, if you ran those Wii ads now, it wouldn't work. It, yeah. I, I, it, it wouldn't work because people are a lot more cynical now. And you usually oh, yeah. have you usually oh, have yeah. those cycles where, I mean, even in the '90s uh, when they would advertise stuff, they would go more for the gross-out humor or you know, look at this crap over here, you know, and and it'd be a lot more uh, negative. And it was just because at the time everybody was a lot more cynical. So you have those cycles where yeah. it, it, you'll have that because sometimes you, like right right now the positive stuff doesn't work. So yeah, you lean a little more negative. So that you know, I guess the beer thing makes sense then. I just I just talk myself into it. You know, it's like, but, but, he's like, God like, damn it, they're right. Yeah. I, I look at it like this, Jim. I think what this in summation, the next podcast we might have to do a more drinking heavy one. I know that you hate that. Oh darn! But, but we're gonna have to do a side by side comparison of uh, Molson Coors and AB and Bev and their commercials, and see who had more entertaining commercials. Well, Brian, in the interest of science, I guess we have to. <laughs> yeah, don't don't, don't so, pull like too much. Yeah. <laughs> so, oh, yeah, no. we'll, we'll, no. we'll follow that up. <laughs> but, Chambers, you uh, you put a new link because I know the old one was broken for this one. But uh, we talked about it, actually, and we're going to get into a little bit deeper with Microsoft. and their We've deal. been following since this whole acquisition started. Since it started. Lawsuit. 
But one key piece of the whole Microsoft buying Activision Blizzard was that you know, Call of Duty basically is the linchpin of like why this deal shouldn't go through. And in the midst of all of it, they released a statement and we covered it previously. It said they were working out a deal to bring Call of Duty to Nintendo. And in the article we have here from uh, .esports.com, it basically confirmed that as of this month, or actually February, uh, they're signed into a 10-year deal to bring Call of Duty to Nintendo consoles. And weirdly enough, the guy who originally tweeted about this at, uh, what's his name, Brad Mori? Let me look that up real quick. So he, yeah, Brad Smith, he tweeted about it, and then he eventually deleted it. So I don't know if something happened in the meantime, because he tweeted that on February 21st. Basically saying, like you said, the 10-year binding contract to bring Xbox to Nintendo gamers. And then... Which is weird because... He deleted that. So, weird. Where did it go? And how can you make a deal for something you don't even... Like, our understanding right now, and we could be completely wrong, is that they're still in the acquisition process. It hasn't gone through yet. PlayStation is trying to boycott that and say, like, you can't do this. So they're throwing out this deal or made the deal with Nintendo while they're in litigation. I don't know how that works. I I don't know. Maybe they can still legally make the deal. Maybe my that's why first I got deleted. Th- that's my only thought with this is until we get the next Nintendo console and I don't have any faith in it. Like their online is very unreliable and Call of Duty is very you need to be able to communicate with your folks. You can't just rely on going on a Discord or something else. So but, right, you can download the app that you can put on your phone, and then you can talk through the app through the phone to other players on the Nintendo network that people that's have my all point. used like, this entire time. Could could Here's my question. Could bringing Call of Duty to Nintendo be enough of an incentive for them to get off their asses and give you a reliable online network? No. You don't think so? I mean, it would be a good reason to, but I just don't have that faith in Nintendo to get, care that much about a Western product to make their system better for it. I I, I disagree a bit. I, I'm thinking that that with a deal like this, it's more of a, a kick in the ass to at least partner up with somebody who could at least help make it a better uh, experience for people. Like Nintendo may not be equipped to do this because you know they are pretty antiquated with a lot of you know how they how they do things that I see them more partnering with somebody to, to improve that that area of their business yeah. and they're not they're not above doing that kind of stuff um, you, know, it, you know they've done it before in the past you, you know like you know, like when they doing uh, like with silicon graphics it was like oh yeah you know we'll work with them you know to, to do a bunch of stuff. and and you know that's when you got the Nintendo 64 and all that it, like they they will do it if their leg is is pulled enough you yeah. know and and that I think would be a major leg pull with it, but when you're going into like a deal like that, um, what I've seen, I'm like I'm not the most you know, adept with you know these kind of business acquisition stuff, but usually when you're doing that and people are uh, generally showing a worry about like oh this might be a monopoly or some kind of thing, um, it's one of those things where to get people to not oppose it, they will offer deals going oh pending. Uh, closing of this transaction, uh, we will enter into an agreement that we will do this once we we settle all of this, and that's yeah. what the Nintendo deal is. There is a you know, it, it is a signed deal, like Nintendo would you know, even said themselves, like yeah, it's a thing. But you you have that that incentive going. Hey, if this goes through and you don't oppose it, we'll do this for you. And they offered the same deal to Sony, and Sony's just... I think Sony's kind of being a bit of a baby about it, but at the same time, I understand why they would. Because they fear that, oh, they could just yank it off the platform, or they could do whatever they would. But if they do one of those deals like they did with Nintendo, like, oh, a 10-year binding, legally binding thing, because this Nintendo deal is a legally binding deal, you know, uh, upon yeah. upon the, you know, the, the, the signing of, like, the final acquisition of it. If they did the same thing with Sony, Sony would have the same deal. Yeah. But Sony doesn't want to just do a ten-year deal. You know, they kind of just want it in perpetuity. Um, and they've already offered a ten-year deal to Sony. 
as yeah. part well, of this thing too. That they and Sony's down. Sony's bitch fest is that that's fine. You're gonna offer us this deal, but you're gonna end up streaming that service for free on your Game Pass, and people are gonna choose between paying the sixty or seventy dollars we're gonna charge versus you're gonna let it free on day one, and it's gonna kill our sales. Well, they also offered it uh, to be put on PS Now as well. The, well, the, yeah, uh, the, 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 the PlayStation streaming as well for for those people. So it's kind of like. I don't see that as a, as a real loss. It's like one of those things where people are going to play it on the Sony console, regardless of whether they got to pay or if it's off off of their exactly. service. Exactly. There, you know, there, you know, a lot of people, the people who are in that ecosystem are good. like me. I mostly play, you know, a lot. I mean, I play a lot more PC stuff these days, but you yeah. know, uh, but uh, PlayStation would be like the main thing because it's the convenience of it, and now you can actually get PS fives. So it's exactly. like, yeah, you know, so it, it's it's a lot more accessible. Whereas, you know, with you know Microsoft, yeah, Game Pass is great. But here's the thing: they're going to be offering, you know, like they're offering, you know, like oh, Game Pass stuff. You know, oh, playing it on on a Nintendo console, like that. You know, that's mm -hmm. part of the, their idea is doing stuff like that. They could bring be like, hey, you know, it could be a win for everybody. You know, like kind of like how how uh, EA Play has kind of worked out. Yep, exactly. For Same a lot of things, because EA Play is on every platform. Like you know, you can sign up for EA Play on Steam, and and, ha and have their library of stuff, uh, mm -hmm. you know, to, to play. You know, like right away. Um, you could do it on the Sony consoles, and I'm like, it, it kind of puts Microsoft in more of a publisher uh, position. Um, which is what they should be. Uh, yeah. Which, which, yeah, you know, which is which would be beneficial to where they can keep their business going because their consoles are still, you know, they're selling, but they're not selling the numbers that everything else is, and not and they all. know this. But if you you know if you switch over to more of like, yeah, we got our own box, and it, you know it, it, we got our Game Pass, we got that stuff. There's a good value there, but you could share that value with other, you know, other companies. And they've done this, like like Cuphead, you know, was a game that was mm -hmm. uh, you know, a game that you know, Microsoft owns that. Uh, Minecraft. They bought Minecraft, which is one of the biggest games in the world. It is on every platform, you know. And, and exactly. They, and and they and they have the parity between all of the versions, and they can all play together. And I'm like, I think the future is in a lot of them working with each other as opposed to against each other. Um, yeah. I mean, like you see the problem in fighting games. In in fighting games, you don't have a lot of things doing that cross play. I mean, sometimes they'll do, you know, like I'm talking like cross play between different platforms. Yeah. Uh, you'll have a lot of people segregated, and that's why you see a lot of fighting games die off real quick. You know, if it's not a Street Fighter or a Mortal Kombat, that thing is going to be dead within eight months, at, yeah. at, at at the most. You know, it's it, and it's it's kind of like you see like DNF Duel, that game came out looks really good but you know like we're talking servers dead within two months mm -hmm. and, and and the problem is you know when you have more people in the same pool you can have a lot more people pay, you know like you know paying into it and playing things together i think that's more of the future of where to go with it because they're spending all this money to make these games you know, you're talking, yeah. you know, hundreds of millions of dollars being thrown into these things. So there would be no way, you know, that they, you know, that Microsoft could go, oh, we're going to buy this. We're going to spend a hundred million dollars and only let you play it on one box. Yeah, they would lose all the money. And as has been proven, people like to shit on Fortnite, like to shit on Call of Duty. But those things were the first games to be cross-platform. And <clears throat> that idea of like... Now you're playing with PC and PlayStation folks on the Xbox was insane. Like when Call of Duty first started doing it, <clears throat> it's going to become commonplace for as many as possible. I mean, shit, the ideal thing is everyone recognizes Xbox offers the best services and things like that for players. PlayStation has the best hardware. Nintendo has the best first party games. Just combine them all together. Like, one way or another. Now, we yeah. know Nintendo will never do that. But if this deal goes through, I think it's enough of a push for Nintendo to recognize, like, yeah, they might not need Call of Duty or things like that, but if they ever want to truly be considered part of the modern era, 
allow Xbox Microsoft come in, get it on there, get Game Pass on your system, and allow them to figure out your fucking server issue. Whatever you need to do. It's to why allow I people believe, to chat. Yeah. It's, it's, it's why I believe that like Minecraft was the canary in the coal mine of this whole thing. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and and the fact that they managed to not only keep it really successful, but also you know, uh, you know, still it's a consistent seller. You're still making oh, yeah. money hand over fist on that thing. But having it be on every platform and have it all work together, you know, like you, I, I could play it on a I, like I remember um uh Travis uh we we, we streamed uh, Minecraft once. And he was playing I, I believe he was on his PlayStation. And I'm on my Switch. Mm -hmm. and, and we're streaming this game. I'm on the Switch, he's on the thing. And, and we built a giant uh, penis tower, of course. Because <laughs> you, you have to. Because that's was, what community is about. <laughs> but it was one of those things where it had it, it, it worked well enough and it had that parody to where it's like, if they could do this with a Call of Duty, they could do this with, you know, like any of, the, any of those games, you know, like I would love it if Street Fighter had, uh, you know, more of a, a worldwide, hey, uh, someone on PC can play with with, with us. Like, oh, like oh, if I'm doing the melee stream, I could pull in people that, oh, here's this person on this platform, pull them in. You know, let's kick the shit out of them. You know, like you want you want to have people in that one pool to where I mean, yeah, could be a little monopolistic, could be ways to screw people, but I think that how they handled the Minecraft thing that looks like the way they're really trying to go about the stuff which i think is a net benefit for people that are playing these games you know the end consumer benefits from that and i think sony is shooting themselves in the foot by opposing it i know they want you know certain things they want things you know get the thing was for 10 years they had uh exclusive things that would come to them like when they were still doing map packs they would get the map packs first you know, they got they, them all first by the time the PS4 came around. Yeah, they got first access to everything. Yeah, and, and that, mm -hmm. that's the kind of thing is they want that kind of thing where like they get something special out of it. And it's like, I don't think we're past that age of where they should get something special. Everyone should kind of have the same shit. Yeah. And be well, able to play together. And actually, and actually, to that point, our next article yeah. is another piggyback off of this whole lawsuit thing where... So a big part of Sony's complaint against Microsoft buying Activision Blizzard has been, <laughs> you know, unfair marketplace manipulation and having all these exclusives. So Microsoft went back and went, all right, that's fine. Show us all of your licensing deals since 2012. And apparently, like, they didn't get all that data, but they the FTC did side with Microsoft and say, yeah, you have a point. So Sony, show what you've done since 2019 at the very least. Mm-hmm. So it's and not been a full win. I mean, if they did 2012, that would have been ridiculous because we all know how much the PS4 dominated that generation. But still, yeah. getting three to four years worth of data out of it and seeing their, the deals behind the closed doors, that's fucking crazy. This is the classic don't throw stones in a glass house. Sony came out, went to bitch, and they were... Now, I'm not saying the only reason they were successful were was exclusivity deals or whatever, but as we just talked about, it's a very well-known thing. Like, fuck, man, PlayStation keeps getting all the best early access, this and that. That's going to weigh so heavy against them and their argument, and they're, they're, like, trying to argument, like, well, it has nothing to do with what we're talking about. It's like, no, it has everything to do with what you're talking about because you guys have been doing it Sure, Call of Duty, all these games might have shown up on other consoles, but you guys got it earlier. You have exclusive packs that they can only get with PlayStation. It's not going to be a good look for PlayStation, is my guess. And if you read through the article, um, and it comes to us from videogameschronicle.com, and the link is below, check it out. The FTC is like, no, PlayStation you got to provide the documents. And my favorite argument from them is like, well, some of it's in Japanese and it's going to take us a long time. It's like, they're like, that's not an argument. Just get this shit and get it like figured out and show us what deals you have. Even better. So, you're a Japanese based company. So fucking do well, it. Well, <laughs> well, that's, that, that's what makes me think like maybe that I don't know. I don't know what's going on with that, but well, it, it'll, it'll, it, it, it's one of those things where you just know it's going to show their ass. It's, mm -hmm. it, 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 oh, you know, yeah. 
Like, like um, even looking at like uh, like a deal that I can think of off the top of my head would be like Street Fighter Five. Um, you're you're looking at Street Fighter Five. That was that's locked to Sony's console. Yep. Yeah, okay. Yeah, the PC version's out there, and and that was always the excuse. It was like, oh well, it's on PC too, so it's not like you know we're being monopolistic or anything. And it's like, yeah, but PC is not the same space as the console mm-hmm. space. Not at all. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah. It, it, it's not. It's not the same pool. It's like, yeah, sure, you have you have it on there, and yeah, you can play with PC on there. That's kind of cool, but at the same time, you locked it out from, like, you know, Microsoft having having it, their version of it. You know, and it's just like, yeah, it, it, they've done that a lot, and and I think it's more of like, it, you know, it, it's a pot and kettle situation where Sony has literally done that to other other platforms before. And, and so they recognize when game recognizes game, and they're like they're about to do it to us. Yeah, and the, and the thing is, Microsoft has never done that. Okay, yeah, maybe Starfield. They're like, okay, it's an Xbox exclusive. Uh, okay, yeah, you know, uh, the the Hellblade sequel is going to be an Xbox exclusive. You know, like it, those are things that you know that they that they acquired. But it's it's yeah, at at the end of the day, they're like. We want to make sure the big franchises are on everything because we'll make the most money off it because most people are going to buy Call of Duty on a PlayStation. So mm-hmm. it would be stupid to pull it off the platform. So they're just yeah. kind of like, hey, work it out with us. We will guarantee you that you get you know, the same shit everyone else does, all this stuff, uh, so that you can, ha- you can make your money on it. We can make our money on it. Everybody can be happy. I'm like, that's the way to go. But... Sony doesn't want to show their ass on that one because they have done this, the, the same kind of stuff where they would like uh, with Destiny 2 it's like okay sure they're letting Destiny 2 be on other platforms but what about Destiny 3 yeah, yeah. It, it, you know what about like they could t- they could turn around because nobody really opposed you know, them you know snatching up Bungie you know and and you know I would think that would be more of a painful acquisition you know for other you know other platforms because they could straight up just go. You know what? Once we're done with Destiny Two, Destiny Three, screw screw all of you. We're gonna have it be like exclusive on the PlayStation Six, you know, whatever whatever bullshit they got going on at the time. And they could just turn around and do that very easily. And seeing how they treated like Street Fighter and stuff like that, they very well might because they're kind of dicks. <laughs> well, dude, yeah. to to your point, like when it came out, a lot of people forget because it's been so goddamn long, but xbox the 360 was a way bigger platform when street fighter 4 came out and like street fighter 4 like you know saved a franchise and fighting games in general like it was way bigger on xbox so when that became a ps5 exclusive i mean also partially because they helped finish off the game they like funded it but still that was like a huge fucking blow at the time was like holy crap this is crazy it's only on one thing yeah Like, Uh, like they got lucky that they only have to show it back to 2019 like if they had to show it at 2012 like the entire ps4 lifespan like, well, that that's what drives me crazy. Is like I'm like 2019 is way too soon. You should at least split the difference and go like, okay, maybe 2016. Like, because they know they would have been completely fucked if they went back that far. So, PlayStation. At the end of the day, I look at it like they know they've done this shady shit. Whether it's shady or not is debatable, but they know they've done this shit forever. They're about to be exposed for doing the exact thing they're trying to call out Microsoft for, and it'll probably kill their whole argument. So they're fighting it tooth and nail, but it seems like at least the FTC is like kind of like calling them on their bullshit, which is, this is one of the rare times where you go, yeah, fuck you. Like you want to start throwing lawsuits around. All right, let's open up your books. I don't think it's going to turn out well for PlayStation. I mean, I, at the end of the day, I think the deal will go through. It, it's going to be what it's going to be, but... It was Microsoft's first big win in a row because they've had a lot of roadblocks thrown their way, so... Oh, yeah. This was really, sure. like, the first big thing to go their way in a long-ass time. Yeah. I, I think it's it's one of those it's one of those big growing pains moments that people are going to talk about in the industry for a very long time because it's going to be the point where that console war concept is going to end. Because it, it it has to at this point, like that whole thing had, like it, it was a, a standard that's been around since you know the Atari days, and it's very antiquated and very anti-consumer, 
and the point is to make back you know at least have a chance to make back the budgets that they're spending on these things so you're at a point where you're at that cost prohibitive you know point that you need to recoup that in any way possible so that idea of having things be you know exclusive like that has to end at this point yeah you know like yeah like have, have the you know whatever because back in the day when you're talking like when like in television and all that you know we're, we're around it, a lot of it was i mean yeah a lot of people were doing like some shitty you know uh, backwards you know you know stuff to like get you know oh atari games on it in television like they have an adapter like so but the thing is you had your choice of boxes and a lot of them would just play some of the same stuff which yeah might suck for some some people at times but it was a lot better for the consumer because at least you had options and yeah having options is always the better way to go than having things locked down like Nintendo, it, it eventually you know kind of bit Nintendo, but Nintendo still does it. They're gonna have their exclusives, they're gonna have their thing, but they're like they're at least being a little more friendly to having some more things that are you know, I mean, not their own IP of course, but having uh, having it be friendlier to oh a Fortnite because they know it's mm -hmm. money because they're getting money off the top on those on those exactly. purchases on that platform. So it's just you gotta you gotta end that whole antiquated system and do a new thing with it because it's the only way you're going to make any money at this point yeah i mean for a while understand. sony was the ones who were bitchy about having fortnite and like rocket league be cross-platform like microsoft oh, yeah. and nintendo right away were just like oh yeah we'll be cross-platform fuck it more for us but they're the ones who are like well we're the big dog you got to come to us and then eventually it was like ah fuck fine yeah yeah eventually eventually the big dog has to share the food you know <laughs> it's like we, you got multiple dogs they got to share the food because right, Roman Reigns, I mean, you got to give a little couple kibbles and bits over to Jey Uso, all right? He needs some too. Shit. Because I, I, I don't, went. I don't think your <laughs> your competition is the the individual boxes. The competition is not that. The competition is all of the other media everywhere else. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, and and when you have all these things that you know, you have all these growing markets outside of this, like VR is finally starting to you, you get get a little more growth now. Um, you know, and, you know, people have the standalone units with the quest and, and all this kind of, you know, like a, a lot of those things as they get better, there's going to be more people doing things with that. That becomes competition. You know, uh, the mobile market is still pretty strong. You're going to have some competition with that because it's a lot more convenient to, to sit in a, in a doctor's office and, and, and play some dumb shit on your phone than, than to like bring a switch with you. You know, it's like the switch is convenient, yeah, yeah. but a phone is smaller. <laughs> So you're going to have one of those things where it's like, I think at this point, it's time to recognize that the world has changed and the way things are going have to go along with it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Jim, it's safe to say DMX at best. Y'all been eating long enough. Now stop being greedy. Yep. <laughs> keep it keep real, it real partner. Give to the needy. Give to the needy. <laughs> Right. So, you know, you know, 1000% we're going to keep following this. I just love that this kind of got thrown back in Sony's face and kind of like, all right, you want to call some shit? Now you're getting called on your bullshit. So we'll see where that heads. But <clears throat> now, Brian, speaking of bullshit, this is this one was amazing, Jim. Now, you we followed we followed the poly mega. Luckily, when we were still part time with the podcast, like we could check in every couple months and there'd be a new poly mega update. And it came out eventually, like, two years ago, and no one's really talked about it since. No. Like, the people who have it, actually, the people who actually got their units, more than that in a bit, they seem to really like it. Not everyone's gotten their units. And now, all of a sudden, it's like, oh, hey, we're going to make an app out of this. Okay. So, this may be controversial, but... So, Jim and I talk, covered it for a long time with the Polymega... You know, it's like 550 bucks for a console with a controller. You get all your CD things, and then you got all those stupid ass modules for 100 bucks a piece. Yeah, but basically they're saying if you use that, and then you get the Poly Mega app. Now they didn't give a price because the service is going to be called Poly Mega XL. But for anyone who doesn't know, Poly Mega was basically a system where you load in your physical media, it downloads that ROM to the 
to your hard drive and emulates it for you. So you don't have to keep loading it up every time, but it is a way to use your physical media, media all on one device and it uses the appropriate emulators. Now expand that to this Polymega XL and they're basically saying that's a free app that on your PC or your phone, if you have the system and you've uploaded your ROMs, then you can freely emulate all those games on your PC or your phone. I actually don't have an issue with this only because now you may get more, a uh, whole lot more value out of that $550 system that I, I think is way too much to begin with. But say you have a whole, you're someone who has a whole system of PlayStation, Saturn games, whatever, and you want to play on the go or on your PC. Now you can versus just downloading them and pirating them. So this may be a failure of the article, but I don't see anything saying how you can not just download ROMs and ISOs and put it on your account. It doesn't yeah. say that. You're, hey, you're not wrong. Mine. You're not wrong. But I try to interpret it like the idea is if you're going to use our service. Now, I don't know anything about the Polymega service. I'm just going to assume that you create an account, whatever is linked to your device, and your ROMs only get created when you load in the physical media. Now, of course, I'm sure you could hack it and put in a USB or whatever it would be. But and they are selling a USB stick as like another alternative. But here's you my deal. A stick to put your shit on there. Why, if you went that route, if this isn't just for the common man who has a uh, physical media library and collection and you're downloading the ROMs and you don't do just downloaded ROMs already, why would you get the system to begin with? So that's that, that Well, no, that's my point is why I'm saying, like, I kind of feel like this is the quote-unquote legal way to emulate all your games on the go. <clears throat> if that matters to anyone. Well, it's see, all, I think... Oh, sorry, yeah. go ahead, Rob. Uh, okay, I, it, all, it all just sounds really strange to me because I haven't really been following the story. But it's one of those ones that it, it sounds very strange, and it, it, it sounds sure. like this is something that's definitely going to be open to all kinds of abuse. Mm -hmm. But but the only people I see really you know going out of the way to buy this kind of thing would be like people who like um like like me. that uh, uh, like you uh, you know, yeah. uh, uh, <laughs> I know what or, I am. or like. Or, or like uh, there, there's that guy, uh, the, the the last gamer, that weird Australian guy had the YouTube channel. Oh, that guy. Yeah. 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 Um, like 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 with his extensive collection, that kind of stuff. It's like, oh, he actually plays those games. It's got to be kind of a pain in the ass to go through the like that giant room stuff. Uh, you know, oh, the the wealth of, of the, the, just the curse of riches with that man. But um, you know, having having that giant extensive library, you want to have a more convenient way to be able to use that library. I understand that, but for like a regular consumer who's just doing stuff, I don't see how that is going to be remotely successful. You know, which is probably why it costs five hundred bucks with you know hundred dollar modules and all that stuff because they're like, we got to get every dime we can out of the very very niche audience. That we, that we that that's around it just it feels like one of those kind of things where you know they're kind of milking it a bit but oh doing yeah. an app i'm like how i'm like how are they gonna like like how are they doing the, the, the security checks on this thing how are they I'm like i know people hack it that kind of stuff that, that'll happen it happens with everything but how are they, how are they really like? Do they explain how they exactly you know do this? Like, is is there some kind of encrypted key or something like that? Or like, what is the what is the deal? Like, how they do it to kind of ensure that like people aren't just gonna you know just swipe ROMs or whatever, or like they have to go out of the way to hack it. So it just sounds like something that's just it could be easily exploited. Yeah, and Rob, to your point, like for one, they don't say any of that. And two, not everyone has gotten their pre-order bonuses. Like you going on about like, you know, the milking of the customer. Like the pre-orders, like I think they were selling them the base units for two fifty, maybe three fifty max at the time. Or with like bundles with like their like add-on units. And then huh. after a while, before it was getting closer to like, you know, game time, they started to sell them full price for like fucking five fifty, which is more than a PS5, which is insane. So 
also with the emulators uh, I, i'm i'm guessing it's like just emulators that are already you know like open source emulators that are just around that they're using like what are they using to do that because they're not they, using I, a, they're I not using they original hardware using, i think they said they were using proprietary emulators at the very least for some of them but that's a good question too like it's been so long i kind of forget to be honest with you well that yeah, goes me, to I'm, my I'm, point yeah like what yeah. what makes their emulator so special like yeah, the Saturn was tough to emulate back in 2017, but it's 2023 now. Like everyone does it. Like it doesn't matter. But my point is like that's what I'm saying. Like for a casual fan, now Grant, no casual fan is going to spend five hundred and fifty dollars for old ass systems. This is probably the most legal way to do it if you have physical media cards and yada yada yada. <clears throat> but I tried looking up poly. Polymega's sales. I can't find shit. I have no idea how much they actually sold, what their, you know, what their turnaround was. And to Jim's point, some people still didn't even get their units. So, uh, like, them, if I was a backer who didn't get my unit and I see them making an app, I would be like, why the fuck are you wasting your time on this shit when I don't have my unit yet? But my only I'd be so mad. So, my guess is the only way you can access the app. You can probably download it, but if you want to use it, you probably have to have some serial number or something linked to a Polymega account. My guess is it's not going to be free to anyone. Like We're not going to be able to go in there and be like, oh yeah, we we have these systems. So it's not completely easy to choose. Because unless they, if they charge a monthly service fee, then to Rob's point, you got to maintain a certain level of security. And you got to be able yeah. to say... Yeah, no, we're monitoring, like, no, people, we have this way of detecting, yada, yada, yada. But as long as you clear the path of, like, here's my key for my Polymega system, then you're kind of good. But that's where I go. I'm not saying it's worth $550, but I'm saying no. at least I feel better for those folks who did pay that amount or whatever they paid. They get the system. Now they can play it on their PC and on the go. And it's all about that flexibility. Same way we're talking about Microsoft and all that. I do think you should be able to whatever. Like if you're not savvy enough to download it the wrong way, if you want to call it that, and you want to emulate your games, this could be a way forward. I don't know. Because at some point, uh, you know, like Nintendo s services, PlayStation, Xbox, they're great. They're whatever. But they don't have all of it. And if you're someone who has, like, like Jim has a crazy collection of Genesis games. Now, that's not applicable here. But if he had every Sega CD game and wanted a way to play it on the go, it's probably not that easy other than illegally downloading all the ROMs and an emulator. So if he had a system where he could do it and then play it on his phone on the go... That would probably be beneficial to him, you know. Like, yeah, so, yeah. It, it's it, it's definitely like one of those things where it's like if, if there's if anyone in the market for it, I'd be like, that's that's the gym market right there. That'd but for, but for me, for I'm, I'm, for I'm me. like, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and I'm I'm like I'm I'm more of the kind of guy where I'm like, all right, you know what? I got an arcade one up. I just put a retro pie in it. That's I just it, th yeah. threw whatever in there, and I got a Steam Deck, and I put uh, uh, Emu Deck on there, and mm -hmm. and now I just and now I just run everything through it. And now I'm you like, have every I, game, yep. Yeah, so it, like I'm sitting there, I'm playing, you know, like I'm playing Snatcher on 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 on, on my overpriced uh, brick. You know, <laughs> I mean, the Steam Deck is is a great thing. I really love the Steam Deck. Uh, I'm I'm glad I bought the thing. But it's one of those things where it's exactly like the, the same thing, with like the the polymega, like the the idea of it. It's like it sounds great on paper, but to me, it sounds like just a 2005 version of a Steam Deck, yeah. where it's like, yeah. you know, like it, like at least with this, I could buy a brick and within 10 minutes of, of of setting up the thing, I could have the emulators on there all set up and it all work perfectly fine. I'm running GameCube stuff at you know at at 60 frames a second perfectly you know absolute crisp you know graphics that could, but you know great but it's to me it just it sounds like it it sounds like those old 
uh, like Kickstarters that that you'd see, like where mm-hmm. it would just be like like it, where it'd be like some guy with a bad like desk microphone uh, talking about like, oh, here's a here's a thing where you could it'll have every game ever that's ever been made. That's just like how. Yeah, yeah, like explain to, yeah. explain to me explain to me your security, how it's handled in the emulation. I want to know uh, what emulators you're using. Are you using open source things? Because if you're using open source things, totally fine. Because there's some great open source ones in there. Um, it's just that if you got permission to use them from from the developers, g- great. You know, the, everyone's cool, and you're doing it legally. Fine. Or if you're hyperkidding, you just take them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, but it's like at least be open about that stuff. The fact that they're not open about it is what makes me very, very sketch about the product. Yeah. Is uh, is like you told me all these things and like how this thing functions and how it's supposed to work out. But it, there's a bunch of questions where I'm like, there's very specific things that you need to know if you're gonna plunk down that kind of money because that's not you know, you're not talking like a hundred dollar like bullshit at games thing that you're gonna buy at like a Target. You know, this is, you know, this is, you know, $500, you know, plus whatever for any modules or any kind of stuff. It's, you know, I mean, Nintendo would probably have something to say if they actually got that thing to market and into people's hands. Mm-hmm. Because they used to do that. They used to do that back with, you know, the Super Nintendo and the NES. They would have those copying machines that yeah. they would sell out of China. And that and it just sounds like it's just a fancier version of like the old copy machines that people would buy to do you know, illegal, you know, swapping of games and stuff. Oh, it's just a ROM dumper. So, yeah. 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 So, so it, yeah, it just, it just sounds like that kind of stuff. And I'm like, I don't think, like, I know, like, you know, Sony might not care too much unless it infringes on, you know, more recent stuff. Because a lot of their older stuff, they don't really seem to care too much. They don't really go after a lot of people as much as, say, like, a Nintendo does. And I think that will be a problem going forward because guaranteed, it's like if you're pulling you know, a ROM off a thing, they're gonna get pissed. Oh and yeah, thousand yeah. percent. So I, that's where that's where it's like, oh, it's it's totally legal. It's like, yeah, it might be legal to do it with your own, like, because you are allowed to make copies of your games. You know, you're, you're allowed to do that. Um, you're allowed to you know, have emulation software. You're allowed to use that emulation software, but it's it's the how everything is distributed how everything is handled mm-hmm. that's where it's going to be a problem because yeah it could do a rom dump but uh what's to say you can't just distribute that rom that you have exactly well let's put it this way this is something that if i can see it on my phone i'll download it see if there's a way to mess with it and i'm sure we'll follow it what the life cycle of this is it is like definitely Jim's, interesting to really keep an eye on that one. Yeah, because Jim and, and I... it's we, the first news that we've had on the Polymega since for it came a while. out. Yeah. Because everyone so, just, like, it came out and people were like, yeah, it's kind of cool. And that was it. Yeah. It's a flash in a pan. And it's kind of like Adam Sessler in his career. <laughs> I was going to try and take a PP. God damn it, with your good <laughs> transitions. All right, so Jamber's fucked up my perfect transition there. I'm but sorry, I had to pee. He had to pee, but I did decide since this is a day before St. Patty's Day, I did decide to switch over to a Guinness. I was telling Rob at the break, I don't think it's a great idea to switch up my beers the way I am, but eh, whatever. So, Jamber's, as I was mentioning, until you rudely had to go pee, um, I know we're kind of late on this it kind of came up and and went and i know you're like a simp for adam sessler but uh that big red beard just rub it on my butthole that's all i need basically <laughs> uh what okay so we've talked about this well, in the I, past. I, well Brian, let me give you a little background so a couple weeks ago i have the, i have the this is one few things i had more background than you because you didn't even know about it and then you defended him without knowing what was going on basically people were giving him shit for an old x play review now i can't say the name it's baton kaitos Baiten kaitos or baton yeah something like that yeah i think it's Baiten. Uh-huh. It's a very questionable review, but it's very reminiscent of everything that was going on in, I'd say, early 2000s. 2006, around the time. So he, it's definitely the humor at the time. Humor of the time. And as I've said, we've talked about this many times. Take into context when you're watching something from the old time, what was acceptable, not giving him an excuse. 
But uh, right. basically, yeah. people Except started calling him F, he, calling him out left and right. And his latest response, and Jim, I'm going to let you read this because he's your boy. Well, actually, Bri, to give you some more background, you dick-sucking son of a bitch. So about two, three weeks ago from recording, I think it was like a, one of the designers for Final Fantasy 15 kind of said, yeah, we're kind of worried about making a JRPG because that was kind of a bad term for a while. And my first thought was, well, no, everyone loves JRPGs now, but then you kind of forget back in the mid to late 2000s, yeah, everyone kind of was bashing on that old style, of like turn-based, like stories and shit like that, overly long, saying it's antiquated and crap like that. So, because it is. Oh, I, I think there was a good a good reason at that time because uh, you had um, you know people like uh, uh, who, who's the guy that made uh, uh, that, that that Mega Phil, Man Phil Fish up. when he made uh, Fez no, when he bashed it. Uh, the Mighty Number no. Nine. I was talking about. Oh, KG Inafune. Oh, yeah, in, yeah, Inafune. Inafune at that time talked extensively about how the Japanese game industry really stagnated, especially like around that time. And a lot of it was a lot of the art, like, yeah, Japanese RPGs were a, a big thing, but it was like when it hit in the late 90s with your Final Fantasies and that kind of stuff, a lot of people kind of shifted gears and were like, let's just make stuff like that. And then they kind of made a, a lot of very samey kind of games around that thing. And, it, and a lot of people looked at it as a very stagnant thing so by the time you got to that x play review you're talking they've already had a couple of years of where it was like yeah for every one game that like expanded the genre and did more about it you had 20 games that were literally just it's the same kind of thing it looks a little like final fantasy but it's it, you know oh we swear it's different but it's like the, the battle systems are very samey the way it handles it it's just very copycatish, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, like, I, I think, I think we, in we 20, can, yeah. Oops, sorry. Go ahead. I was just gonna say, like in twenty twenty three, it's easy to go back and look and say, like, oh, they're just being like, you know, racist and mean for the sake of being mean and shit towards the genre. But at the time, it kind of was beaten into the dirt. It was kind of like a beat 'em up in like nineteen ninety eight when like everything was done at that point and like everyone had done everything. Yeah, like, I mean, even in, even in, in Japan, yeah. Even in Japan, they were like, "Like this is kind of getting old." Like it's sort of like um, it, it, a good parallel of it would be like the uh, when everybody was doing World War II shooters for like the, it was like that five year period mm -hmm. where everybody did a World War II shooter every year. Yep. Uh, and and it just it became this thing where everything was just brown and gray, and you know the. They all had the same weapons, the same kind of gameplay, the same, and, and and that was the kind of thing that Japan was facing in in the early 2000s, where it was a lot of same stuff was coming out. We had that same problem here, so yeah, in Japan it sort of became a bit more derogatory because when people were just oh like oh they're bringing more of that stuff. And anime wasn't huge yet here, so it was just like oh JRPG became kind of a bad word. You know, and, and to them, it was sort of, uh, you know, instead of just calling it a role playing game, you go, oh, it's one of those Japanese ones that's basically like every other one. Mm -hmm. And people kind of wrote off a lot of series that way. So it's how you see a lot of those series, like why people don't have sequels to Legend of Dragoon anymore, because it came out during that time. It yeah. kind of came, that game came and went. You know, people are getting a chance to play it now since it's on the streaming service. But that was a game that, like, it actually tried to do some things different and people wrote that off immediately you know you know there were people who played it really loved that game but at the time it's it's the bite and kaito situation where it's like people were i mean yeah it could be a little racist at times you know because they, they want to you know, rag on the japanese or whatever but because you're going sake <laughs> yeah, uh, putting Kim Jong Un as <laughs> doing it in, and in, George Takei. In, yeah. in Sessler's defense, though, is I don't think he really wrote those. And he, he typically he said he typically didn't either. He just kind of just read what other people wrote for him. And, and the things the the, the 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 voice screaming Saki doesn't even sound like him, so it just sounds like someone inserting that in editing. And he's also the type to also say just say shut up nerd, which I kind of respect. Like anytime Sussler gets into like this shit with people online, it starts with him looking bad, but with everyone spurging out at him so long that he looks like the right guy in the end. 
because they all kind of prove his point, and it's happened a couple times now. And I hate to say it because I don't know. This last time he kind of no this he so could have just shut the fuck up, and then he could have just he could have looked like the bigger guy, but he fucked himself with this latest tweet. Yeah, and I will read it to get back to your point, Brian, because he really did make him look like a fucking sacrificial hero. And this is just this is just bad. So uh, after everyone started to come at him about the Bite and Kaidos review, the link's below. You can watch it yourself. It's only like three minutes long. Uh, final thought. No, the latest alt-right cause celeb progressive knee-jerk catharsis I find myself in. So every pronoun and adjective you possibly could have used for every side. As I've said before, I'm not your monkey, and I am not going to participate in these meaningless charades of public rebuke and contrition because I don't, I'm willing to be your racist today, just as I have been your drug addict, your censor, and your homophobe time and time again. <laughs> That's not a good way to start. It seems to serve a purpose, and I have no image I care to maintain that I will let ruin in the same course as all the others. At the end of the day, my only true regret I'll admit to publicly is that I spent as much of my life as I did in the thrall of such an insipid culture and audience. I love the games and the game design, but the rest is an orgy of desperation that I wasted decades on. Jesus Christ. Okay. Here's the deal. He loves to think he's the smartest guy in the room, but he's proving he's nothing better than a simp, and he's basically a little bitch the way he just did that in, in history he'll only be remembered as a vaguely racist dude who did terrible reviews for video games he wants to be like elevated above it but he's not the thing is he's only known because of that shit and he doesn't want to and he wants to be like i'm not gonna play your games i'm above it but he's still in the mud with everyone calling shit out if you're above it don't make that stupid shit tweet. Be above it. But he's not above it because he knows that's his only grasp at anything relevant to what he's done. I know he's probably made money or whatever from anywhere else. But my God, is he just enthralled with his little 20 minutes of fame from X-Play. And it was subpar at best. And now he's like trying to clap back at gamers and people coming at them. And we know Twitter people are the fucking worst. By far. But my god. He's engaging them in the worst way possible. And cementing his place. As just a douchebag. Yeah. It was definitely a douchey way to go about it. But the thing is. I kind of have a slightly. Just a slightly different take of it. Is one of those things where. People have been hammering him for years. And it's one of those things where, like, we're talking, like, once he was, like, once she 4 was over originally, he was kind of like, thank God that's over. Because people always gave him shit. They would always mess them because he looks a little creepy or he was losing his hair or everyone always had some kind of a gripe on him. And this was before he was actively a dick all the time. Yeah. But I kind of understand why he's a dick all the time now, because no matter what he does, He's gonna get like a lot of his few, and he's one of those dudes. He's he's pretty sensitive to it. Um, he should probably employ my method of going, fuck that, block it, just move on with life. But the thing is, he can't. What is he moving on to? You know, like you have to have something to focus on, and he doesn't really have a lot of things to focus on, obviously, because he's spending all this time doing that. But as someone who's been through you know a bit of the ringer myself online with you know, with dumb bullshit with dumb people um it, it's one of those things where it does weigh down on you and there are days where you know you just kind of want to go off you know where you just you get really tired of it but the problem is he was more of a public figure on top of that when he was a guy who was probably not a, never equipped to do that kind of stuff and he never learned. So he's more of like just like a, a regular guy who was put into this situation by doing. Because, I mean, back when he was doing the stuff originally, when it was like tech TV and that kind of stuff, you're talking like they had an audience of five people, you know? Like, and they he, were the only ones, too, like you're saying. Yeah. And, and, and it was a new thing. 
But as it went along, it was like, oh, as he lost his hair, people fucked with him more. Uh, oh, he's a little twitchy on this thing. You know, maybe he's nervous or whatever. Maybe he's not super comfortable in front of the camera. You know, there are people that just never get comfortable in front of the camera, even if they're on it for years. They'll just, you know, be a little like, you know. And so people go, oh, he's a cokehead. You know, and they'll just assume all this stuff about him. Now, now, and, that's pretty cool. So let's not go off on that. Yeah, Damn but it, it's... It, but it's like you get you get to that fucking point where it's like if you're someone who's not equipped with that kind of stuff which he never was i can understand why he would go off like that and it's one of those things where he's like look i'm not doing this job anymore so you're bitching about my reviews from a thing from 20 years ago i no longer do that i didn't do it when it came back because he wasn't really doing reviews you know when he came back either yeah but people wanted to people wanted a villain and like when Gamergate happened, they wanted he he became one of those guys who was a direct target of a lot of these assholes who would just go after him because oh he's friendly with this person or he's he's friendly with this person or he said something nice about whoever that they don't like that week, so they would always go after him, and I think that was him kind of finally going you know what fuck it, fuck all of you, this and a lot of the things of the culture that he was a part of he's finally soured on it to a point where he regrets ever doing it and i think it's mostly just having enough i think he just had enough at that point so i totally understand it i don't i i, I don't i think it was the best move but i i get it you know i get that point where you, you're just enough enough of this shit you know where you're just like i've had just what, like 20 years of people just battering him. Yeah, and, and, like, and to your point, yeah. it's like, like I've said it for like everything else, so I got to be consistent here. Like, I don't care about a review from 20 years ago. Like, it was a completely different world. Like, there's a popular tweet going around right now about like, you know, how ridiculously, you know, quote unquote, poorly aged everything is because it was a uh, thing from the MTV Movie Awards where Chris Rock made an underage, you know, jailbait joke about the Olsen twins and they came out to let's get retarded by the black eyed peas so it's like yeah we're talking about an entirely different world and shit like that like things change and it's whatever like I'm not gonna bash a guy for something from 2006 I don't fucking care and also I don't like JRPGs anyway so I don't also don't care about that even more but it's oh, that's, why like, I, that's why I think that like I don't think his response was really about that specifically it was just like oh great another thing you're gonna try and razz me for you know yeah. like you know like he was just like you know for years how they how they poked out of like oh he's twitchy he's a drug addict oh he's this he's that it's you know when they're trying to say oh he's a racist now it was just like oh good another thing dude you know, wasn't he is... a liberal simp like three months ago and now he's a super based racist or something what the fuck Pick a yeah lane. well and, that and... That's, That's the, the joke of, of his existence, is that if he just learned to shut the fuck up. I, to Jim's point, to all of our points, yeah. notice I never said, I don't care about his review. I said, you got to contextualize the times, the whatever. I don't look at that particular review and go, he's right. I don't actually think he's racist or anything like that. But his response to act like holier than now and write it the way he did oh, when yeah. he clearly cares about people's opinions about him. If you actually don't give a shit, then don't give a shit. Don't write it. Don't do this. I've said many times to your point, Rob, I get it being razzed, being angered, whatever, but maybe I'm of a, I'm of a different mentality. It's like, dude, <clears throat> be the same way consistently. If you're going to say you don't care about shit, then don't care about shit. But if you're going to go at people who go at you, do it consistently and now he's coming off way worse than if he just didn't say shit but that's not his character he has a mentality of a dude like i i went to school with people like this you grew up and you had everything handed to you and he has a mentality like i gotta respond i gotta show i'm intellectually more superior than all these folks coming at me and i'm gonna show them with my wit 
He doesn't have the wit he thinks he does. He imagines himself at this level of pedestal that he can outsmart everyone in a room, and he really can't. He's subpar at fucking best. And he's just shitty at doing this, and he thinks he's winning, and he's actually losing. If he just shut up, didn't say a word, he would look good in the situation. I disagree Instead, to, 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 to some of those points, though. Um, I mean, yeah, I definitely it was a bad move to do that. It, like, even responding to it is, is you know, that, that wasn't the way to go with it. The way he went about it, but the way it looked to me was that this is a guy who's actually hurt by this stuff. Like, this stuff really bothers him. And it's, it's, it's one of those things where just imagine having an opportunity to do this thing where, oh, I, I, there's a TV station. I get a TV show where I get to talk about something I like, you know, and it's, it's something that you, that you get really invested in, that kind of stuff, which, of course, is fucked over by corporate bullshit and all that kind of stuff. However, you know, all that went down. But at the same time, you, you, got, you got your dream job, but then every day of that dream job, you have everybody telling you you're a piece of shit, you know, and, and it's one of those things where he definitely got a chip on his shoulder about that. And it definitely bothers him. So when people started pointing out that thing and calling him a racist all of a sudden, to, to me, it, the way it looked, and I'm just, I'm not going to totally diagnose this guy as like, oh, he's a schizophrenic or no, nothing like that. Right. I'm just saying it, 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 it came off as a guy who was really hurt. Like this is a guy who, who did genuinely love this stuff. And at every turn, people shit on him. And, it, and, and at that point, yeah, he had enough. And he put it out in the worst way possible because the man has no real filter. And I think it's one of those things where someone should probably kind of like, you know, pull him back. But he doesn't have, you know, a corporation behind him to pull him back and tell him to shut the fuck up. You know, it's bad for business because he's on his own. And he's one of those dudes who can't handle that kind of stuff. And I totally, I totally understand because I've had those moments where I was just like, "Fuck everybody," you know. But, but it, I, it, it, yeah, it's just like it's just like the guy had something that he really loved, and it was a thing that was like a big part of his identity. That for the past, you know, twenty five years, you know, has been completely and utterly ripped apart from him. And, and 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 a lot of hateful assholes coming at him every day and all. I I absolutely understand that, but I think if it's more coming from a place of hurt and disappointment with with, with a lot of this stuff. So yeah, what the way he worded that and trying to sound like he's above it, it just it it, fe it feels more like a mask, you know, of of a guy who is genuinely like really sad about this kind of stuff because it's it's like who like who wants their you know, fucking life's work something they, they worked a lot of, really hard on to, to just be called like garbage and like hey look at this asshole and be a laughing stock no one wants to be that and he can't he never really learned to cope that's good and, and that, that's part yeah. of my problem with it though do you you're pointing it out is he's saying on one hand like if that is the case so we're reading into it obviously like He's a guy that's hurt that people are shitting on him for his career. But then he previously said, like, fuck all you gamers. I never liked it anyway. Kind of shit on the whole industry as a whole and said, I was never about that. You're all idiots if you actually liked it in one tweet. And then in the next, now he wants to be defensive about his own stance. It's like, that's where I don't have a, that's where I have a problem. It's like either call yourself out in your own bullshit and say, I'm a fucking idiot. I liked it back then. If you guys didn't like it too bad. If he said something like that, I could completely relate to him and I could go, I get it, man. Like that's a, a lot. A lot of that feels like more of a defense mechanism than anything where it's, it's like, it, it really depends on how things are coming at him that day. Like sometimes I see people talking to him normally and yeah, sometimes he might be a dick about it, but like he'll be a lot more receptive if you're not immediately like shitting on him. Like, oh, shitting hey, you, you, yeah. yeah, you know. And but the thing is that people will come at him sideways, and that's when it's like, all right, fuck, fuck this culture, fuck all these people, all that kind of. Like, I could understand why he would get so pissed about it because it, it, it's, it's, it wounds him, you know. And it's, it, and it the totally problem gets is, to him. He's sensitive as shit to it, and that, that's my point. Is like, yeah, the problem is that he shows people that he's sensitive to it, and when he yeah. says he doesn't care, he cares a lot. 
And yeah. the fact that he did that only makes those people go at him worse. And when they exactly. go at him worse, he gets worse. So a lot of this is more of a, just a sim- uh, just a whole symptom of a, of a thing where things will just escalate back and forth. And I think he should really just get off Twitter and yeah. just uh, and just kind of really needs to. That that yeah. that that's my point of all of this is, is Rob. I think you're hurting it. Is like it's not about being consistent. It's it's more about the fact that he is a very emotional person who is reacting in a very visceral way to what stimuli is being thrown at him in his face. So the second he opens Twitter and someone's calling him a cunt, you know, yeah, he's sensitive uh, to it. Yeah. 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 So it's, it's like, if you're that sensitive to it, I, I think that maybe you should rethink because, because I, I, I follow him on Mastodon and on Mastodon, he is really chill. Yeah. And, and like, you can talk to him normally. And the thing is, yeah, sometimes people might be a little bit of a dick to him, but Mastodon is not, they don't really cater a lot to dickheads over there. So it's it's kind of like, they just kind of fall by the wayside. You're going to mm-hmm. have them, but it's not as bad of a problem as on Twitter. Because Twitter will push that shit in your face. No, yeah. And that, oh, yeah. yeah. But but on Mastodon, it's like, oh, he'll actually talk about like a game he likes. And and like, it, like he, he, he'll actually, he's actively enjoyed things around people on that other platform. And I'm like, that seems to be better for you. It's a lot less stressful for you, obviously, because you could at he, least like talk about games and things that you love about things. He could be a person on there. Yeah. And, 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 and that's the problem is like he seems like a sociopath where he's like two faced, where on one hand he acts like he's above all the shit, but on the same hand, he's a shit poster who ignites all this bullshit, but then doesn't want to deal with the repercussions, but then spends the time to respond to like 90% of the people who talk to him. So it's like, like me, but not successful. I, well, it, no, it's like you, when you post stupid shit, you don't then turn around and engage every single person who writes back to you. Yeah, true. And, and you would never be that type. That's my point is like, if you want to be a controversial shit poster and write things out there, and think you're smarter than everyone, then don't engage everyone and then start making bold response tweets to everyone. Like that's where I think shit falls down. Like there's a oh my sensitivity. God, I it better than Adam said. Oh my God. That's the sad part. Is <laughs> that's my point, Jim? Is you do handle it better because like you put out stupid shit and you don't really apologize. You just go, "Yep, that's me." You just accept like this is what I am. If he did that same shit, but no, he goes and then starts trying to beat little people one by one and goes as far as like, I've seen him dive into people's like profiles. And I'm like, all right, this dude is fucking sad. So that's where I have the problem with it. It's like, yeah, he's sensitive. He's whatever. I I don't pity him. I don't pity him. No, no, no. Yeah. Like, 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 you know, like, yeah, some of the shit that he gets, um, some of that shit's justified. But at the same time, because, you know, you get what you give. Um, but it's one of those things where at the same time I understand and I kind of feel for the dude like I don't pity him but I kind of feel for the dude because I've been in those positions where I've had people completely hammering me and just shitting on my very existence yeah. and, 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 and that kind of thing like I've had you know uh, you know, friendships end over stupid bullshit and, and a lot of stuff where it's just yeah I might have I might have been a fuck up they might have been a fuck up whatever somewhere a fuck up happens but it's right. one of those things where you shouldn't have to pay for a fuck up for like your entire existence for life should, for sure you, you yeah. shouldn't have to answer for shit every day and, 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 have, and the, yeah and the you problem don't have with that thing with it. like a real life friendship where like you know you have to deal with each other and you can work through it where it's like online it's so easy to be like oh this guy's an asshole block like it's over like, like yeah that. exactly and, and the thing yeah. is you know, he, he's not employing the block as, as, as liberally as he should but it's one of those things where it feels like, you know, like the guy's existence is under attack. And I've been there and I understand that that visceral thing where you, you want to fucking swing back. Even if even if it's a futile attempt to do so, you want to swing back on somebody, you sure. know, sometimes because it's just like, 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 how dare this motherfucker say this about me? And I totally get it because I've been in those places. So I, in a way, I, I can understand a lot of it you know more than some people might you know where it's like an outsider will look at that and go wow what an asshole to me i'm like this this is this is a more complicated situation than than of course you know, yeah. that, that was than, than what lets on 
but at the same time, he doesn't do himself any favors, and it, it, yeah. it, and and it's like where like yeah, he's hitting back, and sometimes he's perfectly, absolutely justified in hitting back, yeah. but at the same time, it's also it's fucking Twitter, and you you know, and you're, you're, you're giving you're giving too much to yourself to a thing, and that's the problem is that Twitter breeds that culture mm-hmm. of people that have to be very present for things. Like there are people that have like ten followers. Who look at themselves like they're they're a, like a public persona that makes you know yeah. big bold statements about shit, and it's like motherfucker, like your parents follow you, like calm down, <laughs> sure. you know, like yep. you know, like that's the thing. You you look at like with all the different subcultures on on the internet, the way like Adam Sessler is the beginning of that. Like he's basically just. Like, like my generation is that Generation X where we didn't have the internet kind of thing. He sort of comes from that, but he's a little he's a little bit later. But yeah. um, so I, I think we're around the same age. But the the thing was like with him, it was like that early internet culture. You didn't you weren't really equipped for this kind of stuff. There wasn't a social media. There wasn't any of this kind of stuff filtered at you. Like it was literally you you dialed up to something, and whatever was there was there. And that's how it was. Um, At worst, it was like a forum post that you would never see. Oh uh, yeah, you yeah. might see a de- you might see a dead body or some weird porn. But you know, it's that that was the internet. Which I it, did. Was, it, it, it was it was the wild the wild what hey sometimes it's dead porn you know but <laughs> you know, like it's just what whatever whatever it is that day that's what it is. And the thing is that there was nothing to really equip my generation and 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 uh, you know the immediate generation afterwards for that that shift uh Mm -hmm. in in how things were you know really handled with things and you look at you look at someone like sassler you know dealing with that it's like i wasn't ever uh, equipped with that kind of stuff but i i also you know i grew up differently obviously because i'm not sitting there doing the adam sassler stuff but like that i can understand where like that kind of mentality would come from yeah. Just being, just right. being, like, you know, not to psychoanalyze or anything, but it's one of those things where it's like, you have to be, you have to, like, a lot of the kids that grew up after that, the ones who had the internet from the beginning, they have a different skin than the rest of us, you know, like they, they kind yeah. of were, they were born into it, you know, so they could handle it a little better. They're, they're a little more savvy with the stuff. I mean, sure, you got, you got your morons. There's always going to be morons, but the thing is, they have a different skin. You know, they they could they could take, you know, mm-hmm. a lot more than you know than say like someone who's born of like my generation who, literally just like had the internet happen to us like right as we're beginning adulthood. You know, like like we're talking like ninety six. You know, I was just leaving high school. You know, Wait, and, is this and a bad time to announce our guest from next week, Sneeko? Uh, so, <laughs> oh god, I still don't know who that is, and I keep seeing you post shit about that gym, and I'm like. That's another I learned, fuck I don't want to. I don't even want to look into because based on your memes, it's not something I want to look into. I, I learned. I learned about it like the other day, and I'm like, oh god, this is. I don't want to know because every awful. time Jim, every time Jim posts something that I'm like, I have to look into, it always makes me sad. I'm like, what the <laughs> fuck? But but no, Rob. To round it out, I think the first thing I want to say is. No, I don't think Adam Sessler is a racist. I think it's ridiculous that people are calling him that. I no, think he's that, just a dick. He's, I think yeah, he's that a dick, re- and his, he's a super yeah. liberal. Like, he's no, not racist. He's I just think a dick. that whole review is being blown out of proportion. I think his response is stupid as shit. I don't think he and, wrote it nor edited it, so I, 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 yeah, I what, can't. You what, can't what, whatever he did, that. yeah. I think, I think, had he not though, like, just like I look at him like the PlayStation Microsoft deal. Had he not just done that crazy ass tweet of like basically calling gamers pieces of shit the way he did, people would not be as much now trying to dig up dirt on him. And I think he opened himself up to a whole world of he wanted to be a clever shit poster. Now he's seeing like people are going to dig up every G- X4 and everything he's ever done and start calling him out way worse. And like you said, he's been doing it forever. Jim, I think. I have an idea for. Uh, I'm gonna write up a, something that I want you to send to him. He might be the most uh, confrontational, but I want to try to get him on the podcast. I would love to talk to him. Because 
because it and actually, what do you call it? I, I, I we have it. We have that. an end that could probably work. I know. I could that's what I'm saying. Things. Yeah. That because here's the deal. I'd want you'd see what I would suggest we write to him is like, I'm not particularly a fan of you. I've seen you go through this shit, but I want to talk to you about your stance on X, Y, and Z, and be very different because I would love to talk to him. Rob, to I your would, point. Uh, I'm a I very different mentality. I would say, I would say maybe not, not, not say, oh, I, I'm not really a fan because he'll immediately be like, like fuck you, cunt. Yeah. <laughs> like, but I, I don't want to try to. I, here's the deal. I, I think I, if we I, phrase it as like we just want to have a discussion about things, he'd probably be up for it because he's talked to other people who like puts some inflammatory shit out there. Is like, hey, where did this come from? And like he would actually talk to them about it. So like he's not yeah, out he, of the he realm did, of that. He did David Jaffe's podcast. And he did the biggest problem yeah. in the universe and shit like that too. Like a lot of things that you didn't think that he would have had a thing, you know, to do with it. I think the Jaffe one was actually it was really interesting because they actually did pull in some people, and some people were actively dicks. And the things he handled himself well there, yeah. You know, but it was one of those things where it's like you could tell it was like you know he, he could go off at any moment, but it, he did manage to hold it together to really you know address a lot of things. And it, it would be very interesting if you guys if you guys can get him on, it would be awesome. Jim would be very diplomatic. I think I would ask him very direct, probably not ultra ultra appropriate questions in the way I talk. That's how I say. It. He seems to be Jim more receptive be very, if you're a little more neutral. No, yeah. I'd be neutral, but I'd be like, dude, why the fuck would you respond this way? Like, but he seems like the type who would respond. Though. That's kind of my point. Is like I want to be direct with him, like. Okay, Jim will suck you off, but I'm of the opinion. And how? Uh, I'm of the opinion of, like, I think you're doing the ball very stupidly. Like, why the fuck would you do it like this? Rob, I'm a gentle lover. <laughs> so, and Jim knows, hey, I may come in with some heat, but I'm very reasonable. I'll listen to you. I'm not going to just completely shut you. Jim will shut you down. When Jim gets an opinion, he hates to admit he's wrong. I, I'm fine admitting I'm wrong. I admit I'm wrong all the time. What the fuck No, is you this don't. Shit? You fight till the end. And you're like, the n 64s controller isn't that be it? Only with you, Brian, because I hate you. That's <laughs> exactly. <why. laughs> and I'm fucking stuck with you for the rest of my goddamn life. But I, 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 I really think we should push for this. That's all I'm saying. Is I think, I think we so. should push for an interview. I and would Brian, be very think, interested in hearing that one. Definitely. I agree. I think he would be a little more receptive if it was just voicemails thrown his way. And Brian, I think we might have some thrown our way. All right, Chambers and Rob. So we do actually have some voicemails. One was a hangover from the 200th, 200th episode, but it came a little bit late. Oh, um, and from- Brian, before you get into that, if yes. you want to leave a voicemail for a future episode, 267-991-0156. That's the number. Give it a call. Leave a voicemail. We'll play it on all these episodes. And it does help if you leave a voicemail. Let us know your name, because we otherwise we have no idea who it is. So just a tip. All right, so this one is from our buddy Max Marvel. Here we go. Yo, Jim Bryan. I want to bring a big congrats for the 200th episode. And man, that's an insane milestone because your broadcast has been like uh, launched since like what? November 18th, 2016? That's like six years ago. Uh, that is insane. And I won't be lying, this is my first time I ever actually do a voice record for your special episode. So if you can't hear my voice, I'm a little shy because I have no idea what I have to say other than uh, uh, big congrats. So, yay. But no, really, this is one of those shows that I'm really enjoying with you guys doing these amazing contacts like uh, doing uh, video game reviews, podcast, top list, uh, any any more uh, videos you keep guys making it. Like, it doesn't matter for me if you guys like big or small jobs as long as you keep making these excellent videos. So yeah, that's all I have to say, and happy 200th episode. Oh, and BS Jam, or it would be very kindly if you just stop bashing the Android series. That would be a little bit, a little bit nice. So uh, yeah, uh, bye. Thank you very much, Max. Truly appreciate it. Max, the beautiful man who runs basically our whole subreddit, which needs more play. So if you're a person who's on the Reddit side, feel free to r slash drink a beer and play a game you want to be a part of the community over there please do we need more activity over there and he does a lot of hard work but and i will apologize for nothing jim apologize for everything <laughs> i will apologize for not a goddamn thing 
Actually, Jim, I guess that would go against what I said. So if you don't want to be like Sessler, then don't apologize. So that's fucking right. <laughs> I can grow that beer too. <laughs> All right. So then we did get uh, three or four voicemails from my good buddy TJ from the same number. <laughs> so I my I imagine. Uh, okay, so they're not five a.m. like the last couple. So let's see how <laughs> these go. <laughs> let's see how these go. Here we go. First one. So I'm walking to the gas station right now. I got I got two things that I want to say. Um, first of all, the JR. PG list you're going to put together and you're going to do the like, surprise end. Oh, we only did one hour. Didn't you already ruin that surprise because you announced that's what you're doing? Other than that, um, can Jim dress up as Shadow the Hedgehog on future shows? No! Minus, like Blackface or anything like that? That'd be what? pretty cool. All right. Congrats again on 200. Looking forward to 201. Y'all have a good night. I mean, look, Jim, it's what the people want. So, look, I know I'm going to cancel myself eventually, but I don't want to do it over Shadow the fucking Hedgehog. Jim, Shadow at least the give me something better than that. <laughs> uh, I mean, I mean, you're you're at least going to be the armadillo. Yeah, mighty <laughs> mighty the armadillo. Come on, Jim, you can you can do it. Uh, if I'm going to do <laughs> that, then at least I'll do Shadow and a character people care about. Jesus Christ, <laughs> give me some credit here. And to your RPG point, actually, to that question. The podcast crowd and the top 10 crowd and the review crowd, they don't mix as much as you would think. So it's kind of like evergreen content in different ways. So yeah. the people who would find that RPG list and get pissed off about it, much like our baseball list that we've seen time and time again, <laughs> it's not the people who's going to listen to the podcast no matter what. So yeah. I, I think we still pull it off. So yeah. <laughs> Thank you, TJ. <laughs> Thank you for the blackface suggestion. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see the next one. I forgot that. Can you tell my fucking Brian and Jim? Drink beer. Brian and Jim. Brian and Jim, drink beer. That's a voicemail thing. I like fucking with them. <laughs> I don't know who he pulled for that. I don't know if that was his wife or something. I, I think that's Melissa. I think that's his wife. But we also know he's uh, he's prone to take pictures with random waitresses with his wife while they're out. So it could have been that too. Who knows? Look, you got to be an Alpha at Hooters, all right? Things happen. I, I, I'm I'm, think, I'm thinking it's him sitting at Waffle House at like two a.m. That's kind of what I'm feeling. So we've we've been there and we have seen those crowd that is at a Waffle House at four a.m. Uh, Jim, I just did his request or her request. So drink a beer, Jim. Both I, I, I don't have one. Like, all my beers are 8% now. And I'm like, I do not need that after 32 ounces of 14%. Oh, God. Do you so drink, this, right? So this next, I already did. So this next one seems to be just for me, just based on the text. So let's see. <laughs> okay, this question is for Brian. Brian, have you ever taken, like, a big-ass shit and thought, wow, this is what Jim feels like? <laughs> Inquired minds want to know. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> can you be a guy who's eaten too much Taco Bell and drank too much and not taking a big ass shit? Um, no, I, I'll be honest. I never thought. However, so back in college, this is a kind of Jim story. Uh -huh. um, Jim set a, a record for number of shits taken in one day with nine. And he claimed they were all substantial, not they just. Were rabbits um and then a few years ago i was i i came close to that throne i was like at like seven or eight well brian i beat that up in vermont when we had that ski trip when i had uh that that delicious pizza that smelled like a sewer treatment plant and then i had did. 13 it, in one day and they were all full boys it, so jim is pretty renowned for just basically practically living in a bathroom um, if, so, if I die from colon cancer, that'll be the biggest injustice of all time. Let's put it that damn way. It, Jim. <laughs> so, so my my only thought of Jim ever when I was shitting was like, oh man, I might beat his record. Outside of that, you I can't, wish I can't say I've ever considered Jim while taking his shit. So, thank you, TJ. <laughs> right, think about me. No, never <laughs> do it. All right, so next one. The longer one, so let's see. <laughs> and it's the last one. 
you know, I ask you know, like stupid questions and everything, but um, dude, I, I love drinking beer and play a game podcast. Uh, it's it's something that I always look forward to watching every week, and I really do respect both of y'all. And I think y'all are awesome. I like to fuck with y'all. It's a lot of fun, and I am so happy that y'all have gone on this long, and I will continue to support y'all. Because it's fun. Y'all are fun. Y'all are interactive. So, keep it up. Jim sucks, by the way. Brian's cool. <laughs> yeah! Damn it! God damn it! It yeah. was so nice! It was so nice until then. I mean, he said nothing but truth, though, right? I disavow. <laughs> <laughs> TJ, as we said, we love you. You're the man. Always appreciate you. Got to get you back on. I, I said, Jim, multiple times. I want to do a larger, I don't know how we're going to do it. Whether it's Discord, even if it's just live on Twitch, get a lot of us together and do a legit power hour while everyone's shrinking together. One we way or another. We got to set it up I, somehow. Yeah, I don't know. We how are, we're we gonna are do. internet dum dums. But we'll figure it out. Ish. We are. But now, hey, TJ, love Swick, you, do the hard work for us. Damn it, Jim. Stop trying to pawn off work on everyone else. Shut up. <laughs> this isn't college again, you son Shut of a bitch. Shut up. <laughs> so, TJ, thank you, bud. Truly appreciate it. Yeah, I'm definitely courting Jim. So. <laughs> <laughs> Rob. Thank yes. you so much for hopping on with us, and thank you for bringing in before, the 200s and this uh, for the podcast with us too, bud. Yeah, we, we oh. really appreciate it. And as we said, we got all the links below. Please, for any anything related, look art, at this, drawing, look at this designs, art. look at this art right hit here. Hit him up. He's got so many examples on Twitter, on Instagram. Check out his designs. As he said. He's been through the gamut of all types. So if you have a need, reach out to him. Very talented artist. Please make sure you hit him up. Justin Robin. Wang, Chris Bay, all big fans of his. Hit him up. Yeah. Rob, yeah, I, I, I will try to. Us. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm, I'm just, hey, this is a new experience for me because I haven't been on a show in a while. I mean, I've, I've, been, on, I've been on Travis's stuff talking about wrestling. And it, it, you know, it's a different vibe. Different vibe. <laughs> I'm drunk. Get, <laughs> uh, I, 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 I can get used to this kind of stuff, but uh, yeah, that. it's been a while. It's good to be back, but uh, yeah, I mean, any, any anything anyone needs, you know, let me know. Um, I'm always open for stuff because I need to pay bills. Oh, <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, it's all, it's all good. Also, buy Atama on Steam. We got that, yep. Yes, uh, it, 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 big shout out to, to Slow Beef on that one. So with that, everyone, we want to say thank you so much for listening. If you haven't already hit that subscribe and notification bell, please do that because the algorithm certainly hates our name. And if you're listening on iTunes or Spotify, Jim, stop doing that stupid fucking look. But if you're listening to us, please give us a five-star rating. Even if you want to bash us in the comments, we'll, we will respond. With that, we want to say have a good night, everyone, and cheers. Cheers, guys.